Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2024 Track and Field State Championships at Welcome Stadium on the campus of the University of Dayton. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Miles Holiday and our entire WSN crew. And, Miles, what a day we got for track and field. Not too hot, not too cold. Now, where else would you rather be than right here, right now, watching the state's best compete? get that state championship. Our title sponsor today is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Miles, it's the best of the best. We've been watching track all spring long. We've seen a lot of the kids from Northwest Ohio who we cover on a regular basis. And it all culminates here, two days of track and field trying to conquer the mountain. Uh, and it's really a picture perfect day. Uh, it Chamber of Commerce kind of day, if you will. Uh, usually, Danny, we're at the state championship, and, and it is uh, really hot. Not today. It's perfect running weather. Um, each runner is going to have an opportunity to be loose and stay loose and run their best. Beautiful sunny, sunny skies and beautiful temperature. Our presenting sponsor today is Lodox Jewelry. Lodox Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodox.com. And, Miles, it's interesting, the 4x8, which we're going to start with first, is going to be a championship race for the boys and the girls, and then the rest of the races are all semifinal races. Yeah, the big thing is you want to be in the top two of your heat, right, because that automatically guarantees that you're going to move on to the championship race tomorrow. If you don't, you still have a shot, but you have to find out where your time lies. So do you hold your own destiny? in your hands today but running really well. It's a sun-soaked day and the stands are packed here at the University of Dayton. When we come back, we'll get started with the Ohio High School State Track and Field Championships right here on WOSN. Welcome back here to Welcome Stadium for the 2024 Ohio State Track and Field State Championships on the campus of the University of Dayton. And Miles, the girls 4x8 are going to start us out today and this is a championship race. It sure is. The first uh, gold of the day going to be given out here momentarily. Uh, Maplewood, Patrick Henry, Kelvington, Kaleida, Colonel Crawford, Smithville, Ritman, Tuscaroosa Valley, Bodkins, Summit County, Fort Laramie, Magador, Riverdale, Columbus, Danbury, Minster, West Liberty, Salem, and Seneca East are your field. We have some local runners competing. The best time, Fort Laramie, at 935, they're going to be hanging out in lane 10. Keep an eye on Minster. They are a really good team as well, a 928. They have the best time, Fort Laramie with the second best time. Uh, Margaret Helmag Helmagarn is going to get things started for Minster. Let's take a look at our premier sponsors today for Allen East. It's Jones Excavating, R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs. Our premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers. Tonight's sponsor is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. And our premier sponsor for today's track meet is Lee's Famous Recipe. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. We thank all of our sponsors. If it weren't for you folks, we wouldn't be able to broadcast this great event. Miles, we've been coming down here. This is my fourth year. It is your is it fifth, fourth, fifth year fifth, for fifth, me. Fifth year for you, fourth year for me. And, and I heard you on the radio yesterday. You said it the best. This is a hidden gem. It is an absolute great day for athletes. And they're off. The best secret in the state of Ohio. Minster started off with a 9 2 8 there in lane 7B. And Fort Laramie was in a 5B. They stopped the race. And I believe we are going to see uh, a restart here as the athletes have stopped running. The second shot was fired. And it's odd because the second shot was fired on the first curve, which you rarely see. Yeah, you don't see that very often. A little bit of nerves, you know, why not? Yeah. Your first time, remember a lot of these athletes, Danny, they, they got here today. Uh, Miles, I've always told this story. Uh, years ago, I was down here at the state track meet, and one NFL All-Pro cornerback, Denzel Ward, from Nordonia was a junior in high school, and we watched him false start in mm. the 200-meter dash. And what it, you know, you come down here, and everybody thinks that <laughs> it's another track meet. Miles, there's 20,000 oh, people here, yeah. and uh, the whole state is watching you. The broadcast that we do, and it is a big deal. Uh, just take a look at the concentration on the ladies' faces as they come back to get in their mark. So we will restart it here for the girls 4 by 800 We're not real sure if there was disqualification, if there was something on the track. We're not real sure. Um, we will find out, and we will get that to you as soon as we can. 
But the girls are getting started here in the 4x800 relay. Again, this is a championship race. No prelims for this. This is your final. One team will be crowned the best in the state of Ohio. A big key is how quickly you can refocus. <laughs> right, you, right. You got right. yourself mentally ready to go, and now you have to do it all over again. That can really play on what your mindset is. Girls are in the set position, and we are started again here in the girls' 4x800 meter relay, and they are off and running. Boy, Miles, what a great crowd we have. The home stands are absolutely full. And you look over at the visitor side, it's halfway full and more to come for sure. Now this time we're off to a clean start. And they are staggered here a little bit, so we will try to get you the information on who is leading the race as we watch here as they come down the last curve here towards the home stretch. Girls 4 by 800, Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday for the Ohio High School State Track and Field Championships on an absolutely beautiful day from the University of Dayton Welcome Stadium. Sprinters, they like hot, hot weather. This is people like the exact weather we have today. Danny, I, 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 if you were running, would you rather be the first person to start it off or would you rather be the anchor? Uh, well, you know, the competitor in me says if they put me in an anchor position, I'm going to give it all I got, and I'm going to believe that I'm the best runner out there. So it, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I, I, you know, I like any position they put me in, but uh, I never had to be the anchor. So. <laughs> so. I, I think it, on a day like today, if you could get the, the nerves out of the way first by running first, might be something you could use that adrenaline to, to propel you. Well, that, and you can set your team up for success. That first runner is so key. Again, the four by eight, it's two laps for each runner. It's an 800 meter run uh, for four participants on each team. And we're seeing the team starting to spread out a little bit here as the top two runners have uh, taken a little bit of a lead. Yeah, you can't win the race right now, but you sure can lose it. You get too far behind. The last two ladies can't really help you out. And, folks, uh, Smithville is in the lead right now. The 4 by 18 from Smithville is in the lead. And here's what you need to understand about the state track and field meet. You're not going to see big gaps between the runners here. Everything, these are the best of the best in the state of Ohio. A lot of invitationals, maybe even the district meets, sometimes the regionals, you'll see these teams spread apart and the packs get bigger. This is the state meet. They will stay strong the entire time. Now Columbus Smithville, that is Mira Martin that got things started for them. She is in the lead and she is going to hand the baton off to her teammates. So Smithville is staying in the lead. Came in with a time of 9.51. They're off to a fantastic start. Continue here on our second runner for the girls' 4 of 800 meter. The girls' record is nine minutes and five seconds by St. Thomas Aquinas. Miles, I was at that track meet. What an incredible team from St. Make Thomas Aquinas. New leader, it looks like now. And the new leader, I believe, is trying to make that out. Coming right into our camera position. He got a good look at it. He'll be hitting the straightaway right here. And Smith, who was in the lead, has fallen back into second. When I say fallen back, they're right on the heels of the leader in a great battle for that position. Third place runner coming up on the right side, the left side, making great strides. And Smithville making another push to regain the lead. So we are going to have a fantastic finish as the second place runners for each team now completing their second lap. Three teams out in front of everybody else. The next pack of three still within striking distance, but you're going to run out of time eventually. Smithville in the second position, trying to make out who is in the first position. Guys, can you take a look there and see who that is in the bright orange uniform? And that is Minster. Minster, all right. We should have known, Miles. We should have known. It's a track and field event with distance runners in orange uniforms. Minster is always in the mix. And Mariah Neekamp was scheduled to run second after Margaret Hemmelgarn. So what a battle we have right now for Smithville and Minster. Miles, there's no school in the state of Ohio with a better track and field tradition than Minster. And they have one of the most impressive boards out in front of the track where it lists all their state championships and accomplishments. It is fantastic. Here they go, 
Here are the second place runners handing off. This is the third runner for each school in the girls' four by 800 meter relay. This is a championship race. This is a championship race. No prelims, you get one chance at this race. And they are in the third, excuse me, the third runner has the baton right now. And it's still Minster and Smithville. Annie Hemmelgarn, the sophomore that was scheduled to have the third leg of this race for Minster, maintaining that lead. The wind is picking up just a little bit, Danny. Yeah, I've noticed that. You're right, Loud. It is a great, cool day. Uh, really cool this morning. And when the sun comes out, it is rather warm on the track, but it is nice and cool right now for these athletes. And I know they all appreciate that. You've been down on that tarp before, and it is really brutal at times. Yeah, the temperature is definitely more intense on the track than it is in the stands, and we've got a push here. Push here on the right side. we got a new leader. And I believe, let's see if we can tell who that is. That might be the Columbus South, maybe? Uh, not more sure. we got a list here. Our vantage point is at, right in front of the press box, so we are far away from the track. Yeah, it's, a, it's a tough vantage point, but we're going to make the best of it and bring you a great day of track and field. And the excitement of the people in the stands really obstruct our view as Minster now regains the lead because they stand in front of us. It's tough for us to see the track, but I love the enthusiasm. Absolutely. So we've got four girls right now uh, competing in this race. Good look at the single file right there. You don't want to get caught too far behind where you can't make a move on the turn. And Minster is out in front. The Minster Wildcats vying for another state championship in the girls' 4x800 meter run. And she's trying to break away from the pack. Strong third runner here for the Wildcats. And Minster will be handing it off to their senior, Cheney Cedarleaf. And she will have an opportunity to close and this look at, out. Look at Rittman, Miles. Rittman's team is coming up. They've taken the second position, and Rittman is gaining on the Minster Wildcats. It's going to be a fantastic finish. Minster goes in with the anchor leg in the first position, followed by Rittman trying to take over first position. That Rittman team features three freshmen, Danny. That's unbelievable. I don't care in what sport it is, when you have three freshmen and you are in the state finals of any event, what, what a future you have. The Cheney Cedarleaf extending that lead for Minster. Boy, she looks comfortable, doesn't she, Miles, on her first lap on the last leg of the girls' 4 by 800 meter relay. Watch how she just duplicates that stride over and over again. Outstanding fundamentals by Cedarleaf. And she has got about a 20-yard lead there, would you say, Miles? Maybe, maybe a little less, but she is really looking strong as she heads in to her last lap. And the girl was 4 to 800 meter relay. Yeah, I think we're, we think we're going to have a new second-place runner Smithville, here momentarily. Yeah. Smithville and Rittman battling for second place. Oh, look at Rittman then kick it in, say, no, not today. <laughs> and the Minster Wildcats on the last lap of the last leg of the girls' 4 by 800 meter relay. The Midwestern Athletic Conference powerhouse vying for another girls' title in the 4 by 8, and they've got the lead. They take it a little bit serious there, don't they? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. don't you think, Miles? Athletics kind of important. <laughs> and here we go, Miles. It is a three-school race right now. And Rutten and making a move. Yeah, it's Minster. It's Smithville and Rittman, one, two, and three in the girls' four by 800 meter relay. Any one of those three ladies could still win this race. Will Cheney Cedarleaf have enough left? And she is coming on the last curve, and she is being challenged by the young lady from Rittman. The young lady from Rittman is coming on the right side. We're gonna stand up to see the finals in this one. It's Minster, it's Rittman and Smithville. The last leg in the girls, four by 800, and Rittman takes the lead. Rittman's going over the Minster Wildcats. Here comes Smithville on the outside. It's Rittman, it's Smithville, it's Minster. And then Smithville on the right side. Smithville's gonna win it. Smithville, Rittman and Minster. What a race. Lila Schroeder, the junior, gets it done. Unbelievable, Miles. 
What a run by the Rittman team as they win the girls four by 800 meter relay. Smithville comes in second, followed by Minster, followed by Mogador. Fort Laramie gets a fifth place finish. West Liberty Salem comes in at six, and Bodkins at seven. Hey, these ladies set the stage, didn't they? <laughs> Fantastic first run. Everybody else, this is what you have to live up to. What a race. Fantastic race. <laughs> The first race of the day, the girls' 4 by 800 meter relay, it does not disappoint. When we come back, we're going to have the boys' 4 by 800 meter relay right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Welcome Stadium for the Boys and Girls State Track and Field Championship. Today's title sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Our presenting sponsor is Lottox Jewelry. Lottox Jewelry, your family owned and operated jewelry for 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Denver or online at Lottox.com. Miles, <laughs> it can't get any better than what we just saw out of the girls. Now the boys come up for the 4 by 800 meter those championship ladies, race. They, those ladies were absolutely outstanding, weren't they? That was so much fun to call them. That one, guys are up now. Legacy Christian McDonald, Fayette, Seneca East, Ottawa Hills, Northmore, Ashland, Crestview, Minster, Waynedale, Riverdale, Lincoln View, Maplewood, Fisher Catholic, Tenora, New Bremen, Mechanicsburg, White Oak, and Ritman are in this race. Now, Danny, your best times are authored by Minster with an 805.81. Now, keep an eye on Lincoln View with an 809.39 and New Bremen at 809.08. This is gonna be a real competitive race. Uh, Ashland Crestview also was very fan very good with a preliminary time of 805.96. I don't know if you saw that, Miles, but they have Minster and Lincoln View paired up together on that first leg. So uh, what, what a race. The state record in this event is a 748.39, the team out of Yellow Springs in 2007. Miles, 748 is absolutely it's blind. Blazing. Absolutely blind. <laughs> It's really one of those races you have to have perfect conditions sure. to get that time. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. The Minster group of Halpin, Napke, Pringer, and Gricehop, some names that are real familiar in Northwest Ohio. Our premier sponsor for today's track meet is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Again, we thank all of our sponsors today. Without you great folks, we could not bring you this fantastic Boys and Girls State Track and Field Championship. So we are underway in the boys' 4x800 meter relay. And uh, looks to uh, another team we uh, just mentioned, the uh, Riverdale boys from Hardin County. Always a good relay team in distance for uh, Riverdale High School. It's a unique mix. Three seniors and one freshman it's on that incredible. Riverdale yeah. team. That freshman, you know, that, that, that what, a, what a great thing for him to learn from those seniors and to work with them every day. And the Falcons are flying high right now. And Colton Evans, the lone freshman on that grouping. He has a high standard to live up to with those three seniors. Miles, I'm just going to say this. This first lap is blazing. We are at the 57-second mark for the first lap. Those guys have got a lot to live up to now. That's a blazing first lap. Sometimes you, you let your emotions get too much of you, though, right? Oh, absolutely. You, you, yeah. you, you waste too much energy that first lap, and then all of a sudden you hit that wall on that second lap. The truth will be revealed here on the second lap. Tenora Rams have a squad in this uh, event here, too. The Tenora Fantastic Track Program. And Minster Miles has taken the early lead here. They are out and about as they come around the last curve in the first leg of the boys' 4 by 800 meter relay. Uh, Ryan Halpin, the senior, was scheduled to lead things off for Minster and a sizable early lead. Boy, Miles, he looks really comfortable. And he's starting to pull away uh, from the pack. It shows you that he ran his two laps in a disciplined manner. Has enough left to kick it in. He comes in at a 155 miles. What a split for that young man. That's, that's, that's just blazing. That that, is, that's, that's incredible. That's cooking. And Will Napke has the baton now, and he has stretched that lead out in a big way for Minster right away. Minster is really, really stretching this lead out. The Wildcats, we saw the girls' team. They led for about three quarters of that race. They ended up finishing third, but what a great job by those girls from Minster. Now take a look at the runners behind Minster. Really, any one of those six teams could be in second place before you know it. 
Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday from Welcome Stadium in Dayton, Ohio, on the campus of the University of Dayton. It's the Boys and Girls Ohio High School State Track and Field Championships. What an event every year we have here. And now we're focused right on the girls and boys four by 800 meter relay, a championship race, and no semifinals. We're used to being at the Jesse Owen Columbus, but due to uh, some work they're doing on the facility, we're here in Dayton. And you know, beautiful conference. Dayton did a great <laughs> job hosting the basketball finals, and they're doing another great job hosting the track finals. And this is my first time here at Welcome Stadium, a beautiful facility and plenty of room for the spectators, plenty of parking. The people have been really great to you and I. Just to, University of Dayton does it first class every year. The hospitality room was fantastic. Who has lobster <laughs> in his hospitality room? That's yeah. amazing. There's some things you're not telling me. <laughs> No, they did a great job. Minster continues to lead as the young man from Minster is on his last lap, the second, or excuse me, the second leg of the girls and boys four by eight meter relay here. And he's coming down the home stretch, handing the baton off to the third leg of their relay team. Minster continues to lead. Top three teams behind Minster now trying to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. Comes Minster. They'll stay in the lead on the fourth leg of the four by 800 meter relay. They're being pushed a little bit now, Miles. That gap's gotten so much smaller. And Nick Pranger, good job. Each one of these Minster runners, Danny, as soon as they've got the baton, have really shot out and extended the lead. They have. They've done a great job. And I'll tell you what, I don't know that you can really tell people how tough. Oh, that second really. leg or that second lap of the 800 it, it's, meter run is. It's an unnatural thing. Yeah, right, right. That's you, a great you're, point. You're telling your body to sprint around a track twice. And the Irish in second place. Trying to get a vantage point of who is in second, third, and fourth right I now. just switched on the turn. You're right. They did switch positions there. And Minster continues to lead. To these squads. Nick Pranger still doing a good job keeping that lead. He does look as if he's slowing down a little bit on the turn, Danny. A little bit as the uh, gap has gotten smaller. We're at 421 in the boys and girls. Excuse me, 5, 518, excuse me. I'm looking at the clock. Minster continues to lead, third leg, second lap, and the gap is closing. Here comes the rest of the field, and we've got a new leader on the curve as Minster falls back into the third position, and we're trying to tell you and find out who that leader is now. I think it's Zach Wiedemann from uh, New Bremen now with the lead. Right. The New Bremen Cardinals, and what a rivalry they have with the Minster Wildcats. New Bremen has taken the lead. The Cardinals just down the road from the Minster Wildcats. The New Bremen Cardinals are in first place on the anchor leg. They've got two laps to win a state title. Can they do it, Miles? This is going to be fantastic. Well, Danny, if, they, if New Bremen does do it, they held on to the last best runner. Check out this name, Jet Jellison. How do you get better than Jet? That is great. You, that you, is fantastic. You look at four guys, say who should be the anchor? The guy named Jet. Well, that, Jet looks it. pretty comfortable, doesn't I mean, he? He is cruising <laughs> on that back stretch. Miles, don't look now, but here comes Minster on the outside as they got back into the third position. It's New Bremen, and Minster trying to get back into the site. What a finish this could be between New Bremen and Minster. Two communities just side by side, and what a rivalry they have. Now Jack Dreishop, the senior veteran runner, making a move now to try and recapture second place. It's New Bremen, it's Minster. It's the boys, four by the intermediate relay. And we are on the last lap of the final leg of the boys, four by 800 meter relay. New Bremen in the lead. Can you imagine going through on the last lap what's going through the mind of Jet Jellison, a freshman running with the hopes and dreams of his, his high school, his team, <laughs> trying to hold on. He is trying to hold on. He continues to lead. Don't look now, Miles, but here comes the field. New Bremen's in the lead. And we're going to 
to have a new leader here on the curve. Trying to figure out who this is, what school they represent. The new Bremen now in second. Going to fall to third here in a hurry as Minster overtakes in the second position. This straightaway is going to be amazing. It's going to be critical. Minster and Bremen battling out for second place. The Yachters are in third place. Fisher Catholic, the Irish from Fisher Catholic, win the boys four by 800 year round. Minster comes in third, and by, let's see, Southeast Minster and New Greenland. So what a great run for both of our local teams, Minster and New Greenland. Jack Gentile, the senior for Fisher Catholic, comes out of nowhere yeah, to win it for him. Did a great job on the uh, last straightaway. We come back, we're gonna get into some hurdles, Miles. It's girls, 100 meter hurdles. Go watch the high school track and field on WOS. Welcome back to Welcome Stadium here on the campus of the University of Dayton for the Boys and Girls Ohio State Track and Field Championships. It's the girls 100 meter hurdles up next, Miles. Let's take a look at our premier sponsor for Allen East. It's R.D. Jones Excavating, serving their excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all your athletes and go Mustangs. The premier sponsor for Marion Local is OPEC. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPEC. Miles, let's take a look at the field. We have three heats. This is the first heat. Uh, Kayla Eaton in lane number two from Triad. The senior, Madison Smith from New London in lane three. She's a junior. Azure Travis from Woodmore, a, a senior. We have a Brin, Brinsley Hiscock from United. She's a freshman. Morgan Apple from Lipstick, a junior. Molly Bram from Minster, a freshman in lane number seven. Danny, the best time is authored by Azure Travis from Woodmore, the senior, with a 14-7-1. The all-time state record in this event is Katie Ruffner from Colonel Crawford. Again, I was at that meet. She ran a, are you ready for this, Miles? 13.71. That is amazing. Did she run over top the hurdles or directly through them? <laughs> She's superwoman because she just flew right over top of them. That is amazing. Katie Ruffner was a special athlete. She is the state record holder. So we're going to see if we can even state records set to them. Do you always talk about the back leg snapping over top, these hurdles? It is so important. Think about it. You've worked on this technique all season, all career long. You really want to make sure you get that lead step down, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely, Miles. And, you know, it's so critical. When you watch these girls, they all three step these hurdles, and they all have impeccable form. You don't get to this point in the season and not have the form you need to be successful in this event. Technique is everything in the hurdles. Don't let the hurdle really stop your stride. Just make sure your stride goes right over top of it. Keep running through. This is going to be a fantastic race. All three of these heats, the times are just phenomenal. We'll keep our eyes on lane six and lane seven are our local runners, Morgan Apple from Lipsy and Molly Brown from Minster, a freshman introduction to I always like seeing the wide-eye freshman at these events the first time trying to soak it in as, a, as opposed to the senior that's been here four times. Absolutely. So folks at home, the top two finishers from each heat, and we have three heats plus the next two fastest. So you don't have to win the race, but you do have to get top two in each heat or hope that you have one of the fastest times. You definitely want to control your own destiny instead of waiting around to see where you fall and get one of those uh, last couple spots. Watching as your Travis from Woodmore with a blazing time of 14.71 and miles. That's the fastest time in the state of Ohio right now in the field. She'll be hanging out in lane number four. One of my favorite things, Danny, is, is to watch the athletes get themselves ready. And a lot of times they, they back in and they have that smile. Then all of a sudden something clicks in their head and that smile disappears and they get that laser-like focus. Officials to call the girls into the blocks as they nervously stand there. And I heard you this week on the radio show talking about my daughter in track and field, making fun of me because I always talk about how, you great, are a, how great she was at track and you field. You are a proud <laughs> papa. Anytime I you know, get a chance I to know. brag, you do. I do. I remember my daughter being here her junior and senior year. What a thrill it was for our entire family. And, and she was probably thankful that she got her athletic ability from mom. <laughs> yes, that's right. Everybody's thankful. <laughs> uh, so they are waiting to get everything set here. 
it's amazing, Miles, when these races, these sprint races start, how quiet it gets in the stands, and, the, and there's just a hush over the crowd, and then when they take off, this place just gets electric. Yeah, it goes from a conversational tone to a low murmur to dead <laughs> silence. So, so much fun. Miles, you look at this home stand, and it is absolutely packed. They're, they're waiting to get this race started because they're acknowledging the boys 4x800 champions on the podiums right now. Absolutely. The uh, team from Fisher Catholic on top of the podium there, the Irish, as they run that boys 4 by 800 If you took the, the amount of time where they are in the lead of the race, the, both the girls and boys from Minster, right. very impressive, but Unfortunately, you have to be the one with the baton that crosses the, li the line first. Boy, the uh, track and field season miles goes so quick. These kids start uh, in the dead of winter preparing and prepping, and uh, it just flies by. And by the time we get to state, it always amazes me that you and I will go do track meets, and we'll be bundled up in, in, in every layer of clothes. And by the time we get to the state meet, it's nice and warm. And today we've got a great, cool day, not that expected. And usually we're down here just sweating a lot, but today is a great mile day. I, I think the OHSAA should rename it. It's not a spring sport. It's a winter summer sport. Right. There, there is no spring. It is dead cold to boiling hot. That's right. So they have just acknowledged the boys for 800 meter relay and we are waiting. I think we're waiting for some of the photographers here to uh, get out of the way. Think about it, Danny. Th these ladies have been hanging out in their lane assignment yeah. for quite a while. Yeah, you're right. It, it is a tough proposition for these young ladies as they are waiting to get underway and they're nervously standing down there. You and I are standing up and we're even moving our legs and have a little nervous energy. Imagine what's going through their bodies and their minds as they're being in a, a position. When, we, when are we gonna start this race? I wanna go. So the starter has in position and they have called the girls to the blocks. Again, as your Travis from Woodmore with the fastest time in the state of Ohio right now at 14.7. She is in lane four. Our local participants are lane six, Morgan Apple from Lipsick, and lane seven, Molly Brain from Minster. We'll be keeping an eye on them. They're in the blocks. Set. And we are underway in the girls' 100-meter oh hurdles. My. And it is oh Azura my. Travis from Woodmore. And she is absolutely dominating this race in lane four. And she is going to run away from this one. Azure Travis Woodmore with a time of 14.5, right about her time. And she has went under her time at 14. .5. I don't know if I've ever seen a more impressive two starts, uh, two hurdles at the start. Like Azure, she was flying over top of those. No wasted energy at all out of her. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Kayla Eaton from Triad will finish second. So Azure Travis and Kayla Eaton are guaranteed their spot in the finals tomorrow afternoon. Azure Ta Travis, D Danny, she looked like she could be even better, right? Oh, yeah, she was really good. That's a 14.5, so. Miles, heat two is up, and we've got a Northwest Ohio flavor for this big time event. Yeah, lane two, Ava Vecchioni from New Middleton. Maggie Thompson from Danbury, Grace Moeller from Marion Local, Liv Lindemann from Delphus Jefferson, Kelsey Heckman from Danville, and Riley Jones from Allen East. Uh, Jones and Lindemann know each other extremely well. <laughs> Best time, Grace Moeller in lane four from Marion Local, 14.75. Now, Lindemann is close, though, with a 15.01. And I'm just going to say this, Liv Lindemann and Rylan Jones, Delphus Jefferson and Allen East, have competed with each other for the last three years. As you said, Jones is a junior. Lindemann is a senior. They have seen enough of each other. they got to be sick of each other. Well, but I'm sure they're both fans of each other. If you follow those track programs on Twitter, it's like every single weekend there's another record broke by those two. Well, here's the thing about those two athletes in Rylan Jones and Liv Lindemann. We have saw them play other sports, oh, and they absolutely. are spectacular at everything they do. Yeah, Lin Liv Lindemann, she can fill it up a little bit on the oh, basketball court, she's huh? she's good. She's good. So we are in the blocks in the second heat here. Lane four. Grace Moeller from Marion Local has the fastest time in this heat. Keep an eye on that lane. 
And Moeller just a sophomore from Marion Local, 14-7-5. First hurdle might really determine who wins this one. In the set position, and they are underway in the girls' 100-meter hurdles. Now look at Lindemann picking up, being answered though by Moeller. Lane four right now, and it is Grace Moeller, and I believe Lynn Lindemann comes in at second. Yeah, those are going to be your top two. Lindemann did a great job on the second and third hurdle, but she was answered by Grace Moeller, who rang the bell, said, I'm going to win this heat. And it looks like Ryland Jones from Allen East comes in in the fifth position or the sixth position, so she's just going to have to wait her time to see where she finishes if she qualifies for the finals. Heat three miles, and again, a Northwest Ohio flavor. Lane number two, Jesse Burgeye from Ottoville. She is a senior with a 16-11 time. Olivia Todd in lane three from Black River. Ava Hewlett from Mineral Ridge in lane four. Grace Lamoureau from South Central in lane five. Ariel Heitkamp from Fort Laramie, the junior with a 15.12. Madeline Brenner from Tuskegee Valley, a sophomore. So we take a look at these three heats, Miles, and we've got three freshmen in these three heats, which is, you know, you typically see juniors and seniors at the state meet because they've been there, done that. Uh, you know, when my daughter was here her junior year, it was a different feel from her junior year to her senior year. Oh, she was much more relaxed her senior year, and she did much better her senior year. She knew what to expect. So to be a freshman and be in this position is amazing. It, it always cracks me up because you think about where they at a year ago. They were right. a, a middle school track, <laughs> and now they're on the, the big stage. Uh, the best time in this heat. Uh, Ava Hewlett from Mineral Ridge, the junior with a 15.20. So we know that so far, qualifying for tomorrow's finals, Azure Travis from Woodmore, Kayla Eaton from Triad, Grace Moeller from Marion Local, and our own Liv Lindemann from Delphus Jefferson. So uh, two local athletes have already qualified for tomorrow's finals. Well, everybody's going to have their work cut out tomorrow if they're going to get that first place finish. Azure Travis was just phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. So we are in the third heat in the girls' 100-meter hurdles as they have called them to the blocks. Fastest time, Ava Huell from Mineral Ridge at 15.2. She is in lane four. We'll keep an eye on her and our local flavor, Jessa Burgai from Otteville in lane two. And Ariel Hike Camp from Fort Norman. They are underway. It is lane four right now. And that is Ava Hewlett from Mineral Ridge. And she is being challenged on the outside. And this one is going to be a close one. We've got four runners. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have to wait and see, Miles. I think Graceland like Lamoureau from South Central is doing a good job challenging as well. And it looks like Jessa Burgai from Ottaville, maybe? They've got her on. Nope, they're changing the board now. Excuse me. It looks like Ariel Heitkamp from Fort Loramie comes in with the win as she's followed by Lamoureux from South Central. So those two have punched their tickets to the finals. That was a really competitive race. Any one of the top four could have won that coming into the last two hurdles. So what a race, and now we know some of the young ladies who are going on to the finals. When we come back, it's the boys' 110-meter hurdles. It's the Ohio High School Track and Field Championships right here on WOSN. Welcome back to today's coverage of the Ohio High School State Track and Field Championships here on WOSN. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Miles Holiday, and it's the boys' 110-meter hurdles, Miles. We've already seen several girls punch their ticket to the finals, and here's hoping the boys do the same. They did a great job of transforming the hurdles to get this ready to go. This is a top-line group running this meet, Danny. Lane two, Aiden Rodstrom from Rootstown. Brody Baker in lane three from Cary. Nathan Booth in lane four from Shadyside. Carter Herman in lane five from Edgerton, the senior with a 14.74. In lane six, David Blackman from LeBray, a senior. Cardi Cook in lane seven from South Central, a senior. Again, Carter Herman from Edgerton with a 14.74. Best time in this, though. Nathan Booth in lane four from Shadyside, the senior 
out there at a 14-3-8. And look at Carter Herman's time from Edgerton. The senior has one of the fastest times. You look at the field, Miles, he's got a real chance to go to the finals. He does, and it, is, it speaks well of playing more than one sport. A heck of a basketball player as well. Just an all-around really good athlete. Carter Herman's got a great chance to win this. Miles, we talk all the time about technique uh, in the hurdles. How tough is that starting block? Coming out of that starting block and heading to that first hurdle. Yeah, you got to get off to a great start. Yeah, if right. you don't, it's so tough to win. If you get off to a little misstep, it throws off your stride, throws off your attempt to go over to hurl, everything gets thrown off. And folks, that is analysis from the best, telling you that if you don't do well, you won't win. Congratulations. <laughs> that's, that's why I, I am in here. I'm in this position to tell you those vital things. Do good. Do good, that's run That's what I'm fast. trying to say. <laughs> do good, run fast. What a great day here at Welcome Stadium. Miles, I told you, you look across the field and the visitor stands is almost 100% full. Miles, there's got to be 15, 20,000 people here. This, this is what Ohio High School track and field is all about. Best kept secret in it the is. state of Ohio. It absolutely is. You see some tremendous athletes every single year. Incredible venue here at the University of Dayton. And we are just about underway in the boys' 110 meter hurdles. Best finish, a state record, 13.62. Chad Zallo from Warren JFK. Miles, I've never seen a high school athlete run their hurdles like Chad Zallo did. Went on to Youngstown State, had great success at the college level. And we are underway in the boys' 110 meter hurdles. And it's Lady Baker from Chad. Who you know it is? It is lane four, and that is Nathan Booth. And he is going to run away from this one. Nathan Booth. Boy, he was strong Shane over the side. hurdles. And watch him right here go over top and then brings that right leg. Boy, he is wasting absolutely very little energy. Very impressive run for Nathan Booth. And there's our guy, Carter Herman, Miles. He punches his ticket to the state finals. Congratulations to that young man as he moves on to the state finals. Now we'll get to see him run again tomorrow. Gonna have his work cut out as Nathan Booth was really impressive. Back here for the third heat in the boys' 110-meter hurdle when we came to the University of Dayton, the Welcome Stadium. And Miles, five of the six athletes in this event all represent Northwest Ohio. To take a look at lane number two, Cody Ricker from Lincoln View, the junior. Lane three, Jay Schroeder, or Schroeder from New Knoxville, the junior. Jackson Brown in lane four from Ada. The senior has the best time in this heat at 14.70. Lane five, Lucas Hartle from Jackson Center, the senior. Lane six, Jeremy Reber from Waynesdale, a senior. In lane seven, Garrett Trentman from Ottaville. That's a name that we're familiar with. Heck of a basketball player as well. Absolutely. A junior, 15-3-9. Your best time again, Jackson Brown, sweet music on the track. The Ada senior, 14-7-0. Lucas Hartle from Jackson Center, second best time as the senior with the 15-06. I had an opportunity to watch Jackson Brown several times over his career. Fantastic athlete. He's got a real shot at winning a state title here in Dayton. Well, don't forget how impressive Nathan Booth was in that first heat. He was absolutely flying over top of these hurdles, but you're right, uh, Jackson Brown, a heck of a runner, 14-7-0, and that makes the, the anticipation for tomorrow even better. Yeah, I watched Jackson Brown in some big invitationals, and he seems like he rises to the top when the competition is really good, and I really believe he's going to have a great race today, so we shall see if the senior Bulldog can come through and qualify for the final. Remember, it's the top two finishers from each heat plus the next two fastest time. So Jackson doesn't have to win his heat, he just has to finish in the top two. How about the anxiety of waiting around oh. to see if you make it by trying to study everybody's times? Yeah, it's, it's a tough wait for these young men and women. So they have been called to the blocks as we wait for the start. Third heat here with the boys, 110 meter hurdles. Again, all eyes on lane four, the senior from Ada Jackson Brown with a time of 14.70. Kind of a prolonged wait. Sure is. They're in the set position. And we are underway. And a good start from Brown as he gets an early lead in lane four. And he 
team that's really strong right now. Being contended on both sides, it's Jackson Brown in the middle of the track. Jackson Brown on the last hurdle, and it is Jackson Brown from Ada. He wins the third heat in the boys 110 meter hurdle. Uh, Garrett Trentman from Ottaville, great job. But the last two hurdles kind of come up and bite him a little bit. You see it right there. He was in second spot, fell behind. I think it was Lucas Hartle from uh, Jackson Center. Might have grabbed second. It is Lucas Hartle from Jackson Center. And again, Jackson Brown wins that at a 15.03. We know he can run much better. So you know tomorrow is everything he's going to give to win a state title. He ran just good enough yeah, today, he did, right? right? Absolutely. He, he, he really, honestly, it was a close race, but he wasn't pushed. That'll do it for the boys and girls hurdles. We come back, it's the girls 100 meter dash. It's the speed race from Welcome Stadium on the campus of the University. It's time for speed on the track. It's the girls 100 meter dash. Miles, you know my fondness for this race. It's my favorite race in track and field. And we've got a lot of Northwest Ohio athletes in the next two. Weeks. It's the recess race, right? Absolutely. Hey, you want to race? <laughs> All right, in lane number two, Ellie Moeller from Liberty Center, the senior. Lane three, Joyce Stallard from Wellington, a senior. Izzy Zahn from Coldwater. In lane four, the junior with a time of 12-2-1. Alex Kesson from Delphi St. John's, a senior with the best time in this at 12 even. Madison McDaniel, lane six from Dawson Bryant, the senior. Addison Swergen from Fairlawn. Uh, the senior is in lane seven. Again, the best time in this, Alex Kesson from Delta St. John's, a senior with a 12 even. Izzy is, is Zahn from Coldwater, the junior, with a 12 to one. In lane five, Alex Kesson from Delta St. John's. A little bit about her miles. I've watched her run since her freshman year, and you've just saw the development and the growth. That young lady is a sprinter, and she's taken her lumps, and she's really done a great job of just getting better and better each year, and here she is vying for a state title. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take up for Ellie Moeller, the Liberty Center senior with a 12.65. Tremendous athlete. If she gets off to a really good start, Danny, don't be surprised if she steals this one. Calling it? Are you calling it? You're calling like like a like a like you're at a horse race. You're calling the winner. Yeah, you you kind of call the finish like a horse race. <laughs> I know, right? Down the stretch they come. Get a little excited about this race. So the runners are in the blocks. Let's see here. Stand up to watch this one. They are in the set position, and we are underway in a great start. And Kesson in lane four has got the early lead as she goes down the track. It's Alex Kesson from Delta St. John's. Alex Kesson holding on, and she's going to win the girls' 100-meter dash. The second heat, Alex Kesson will move on to the finals tomorrow. And Izzy Zahn from Coldwater right behind her. The Mac girls move on. Uh, Kesson made her move in the middle portion of this race. Separated herself from the other runners. Ran a good race. Not a misstep out of her. Runs at 12.03, so right around the time that she was seated in, and her and Izzy's on. What a battle that was. Heat three miles and another quick, quick field to watch. A lane two, Olivia Kingry from Dawson Bryant, a senior. Lane three, Aubrey Vitti from Lakota, a junior. Ianya Charlton from Trinity in lane four, a junior. Peyton Johnson in lane five from Peebles. She is a senior. Anna Rossner from Fort Recovery, a junior with a time of 12.24. Alyssa Webb in lane seven from Oberlin, the sophomore with 12.86. Best time, Rossner from Fort Recovery at 12.24, the favorite to win this one. Miles down here in 12, or excuse me, in 2011, I watched a young lady by the name of Candace Longino Thomas from Gate Mills. Uh, Academy, and she has run the fastest 100 ever at 11.7, still the state record holder in Division Three. It's a rule that if you have three names, you're always <laughs> going to be a really good athlete, <laughs> really right? Fast, really fast. Yeah, you don't see many three-named athletes where they're not very good. And as she, she goes was. to a, a three-name Gate Mills Gilmore Academy, and four names. <laughs> Makes the life of an announcer very difficult. In the blocks, just awaiting the official to move them on. Again, Anna Rissner from Fort Recovery, the junior at 12 2 in the sixth lane. We'll see if she can qualify for the final. They are set. 
and away they go. We are underway, and Anna Reznor in lane six. Look at her go. She is right up there amongst the leaders, and she is vying for the win, and she's going to finish second, and she's going to finish second to Aina Charlton from Trinity, but Anna Reznor from Fort Recovery is moving on to the final. She really did a good job of challenging Charlton, but Charlton held form, able to hold her off and get the victory. So we're going to have three girls in the finals from the MAC in Izzy Zahn, Alex Kesson, and Anna Russ. That'll be a, a fantastic Thursday. When we come back, it's the boys' 100-meter dash. We're back here for the boys' 100-meter dash. A welcome stadium on the campus of the University of Dayton. And Miles, these guys can just fly. We saw the girls earlier. These guys can just fly. Yeah, this first heat should be a dandy. Lane two, Remonte Coleman from Northwood, a senior. Lane three, Connor Gibson from Versailles, a, a uh, Versailles a, a sophomore with 11 3 4. A, a lane four, Gabe Apong from Tree of Life Christian, a junior. Best time in this heat of a 10 9 5. Uh, lane five, Owen Roth from Edgerton, the senior with 11 1 4. Sammy Tallison in lane six from Dalton, a junior. And Griffin Stackhouse from Bluffton. The junior authored 11-2-3. The state record holder, Miles, and you've heard this name before, is a 10-5-5 from Chad Zallow, who is also the state record holder in the 110 hurdles. I watched that young man win the 110, come back and win the 100 in the same event. Or same meet, excuse me. Same, I was going to yeah. say, same event. That, no, no, no. They're, they're really shaking things up in the track world. <laughs> All eyes will be on Gabe Opong from Tree of Life Christian with a blazing time of 10.9. With a stack house from Bluffton. Lane seven with some local flavor, runs an 11-2. The wind picking up just a little bit. It's gonna push him just a little bit. They'll be at their back. They are underway, and it's lane six. Amy Thomas from Dalton, but Opong in lane four takes control of this one, and he's going to win this one easy. Gabe Opong, Tree of Life Christian. That was almost like he was kind of gauging the rest of the field before he wow. kicked it in. With a blazing time of 10 8. Didn't get a great start, still runs a 10 8, followed by Sammy Thomas from Dalton. Those two move on to the finals. Oh, Obong's going to be tough to beat tomorrow. It's heat three here in the boys' 100-meter dash, Miles, and four local runners representing Northwest Ohio. Lane two, uh, Braden Chenault from Paimatin Valley. And lane three, Garrett McKinsey. Kenneth from Oak, uh, Oak Hill, the uh, junior, or senior rather. Lane four, Samuel Haley from Pettisville, the senior. Has a time of 11.10. Lane five, uh, Justin Gnauf from Marion Local, the junior with 11.22. Clayton Patterson from Ridgemont, lane six, the senior with 11.15. And Kamari Glenn from Lima Perry, the junior with 11.35. Danny, it's going to be a real competitive race. Yeah, and it's interesting, Miles. We talked about the MAC having multiple contenders in the heat. We look at the Northwest Central Conference with Clayton Patterson from Ridgemont, a fantastic sprinter at 11.1, and Kamari Glenn from Lima Perry, who's qualified in four events for the weekend for the track and field event. Yeah, Samuel Haley from Pettisville, best time again, the senior with 11.14. And if you've ever been to Pettisville, Danny, it is one of the best communities you'll ever visit. Never been to Pettisville. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Make sure you stop at Sunday's Market. It is like walking into Ike Gotze's store on the Waltons. Oh, will Yancey be there? <laughs> it might be. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the right time of day. <laughs> and I hope Jason Walton's on the piano. So we are just about getting ready. Keep an eye on Clayton Patterson from Ridgemont, the senior better and better each year for the Golden Gophers. They're really, sure. anyone's race in this. It is, you're right. You look at those times, and this is anybody's race, but you look at these communities, all these communities are small communities, and these kids representing their communities, and you can hear the crowd as these kids take off, and you can see the, the sections where the colors shine brightest, and they cheer for their local athletes. It is always fun, and one of the treats coming down is seeing all the the riding on cars, the celebration of <laughs> right. who's inside the car on the windows yeah, right. and the t-shirts that are made for the state track championship. It is one of those special events. We are in the set position. And away we go. The third heat in the boys 100 meter dash. 
and it is a good one. Everybody is in contention for this one. And we have a winner. Let's see who that is. What a race, Miles. That was really hard to call. And I think Marion Local gets it done. Right. Justin Knopf again. Justin Knopf, I believe you're right. Great start, and then was able to just hold everybody off. We'll wait and see the official results here, see who moves on to the finals tomorrow as we wait for the board. You know when the board takes a while to put it up there, that was a close race, so we're, uh, we're just waiting on the results here. Before we go to break, yep, it is Justin. Well, they covered it up there. They started to put it up. We do know Justin Knopf is the winner. He moves on. When we come back, we'll get into more relays. It's the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. You're watching High School Track and Field right here. We're back here at Welcome Stadium on the campus of the University Day. It's the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. Today's premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Our title sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor, bringing resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Miles, it's relay time, and it's the girls' 4x2. Lane number two, Anna. Lane number three, Wayne Dale. Lane number four, Fort Laramie. Uh, lane number five, Summit County Day. Lane six, Tuscarola Valley. And lane seven, Seven Hills. Your best time in this is authored by Fort Laramie with a 143. Lane number five, Summit Country Day. Cincinnati Summit Country Day. And we're going to go off the key here a little bit, Miles, with famous Dexter Bailey, who ended up going to University of Xavier, an outstanding basketball player. In 1979, he played for Summit Country Day. Do you know how I know that? <laughs> how? Because when I was a little boy, we were playing Kaleida in the regional finals. Kaleida ended up winning, and they go on to play Cincinnati Summit Country Day. I had no idea that basketball was a thing when you were a little kid. Well, That's fantastic. It, yeah, they invented it right after I was born. So, Miles, we talk about it all the time. It's not always the fastest team to win this race. It's the team that gets the baton around the track the fastest. Four athletes running 200 meters, and it's not always 200 meters, correct? Every year we see somebody have a little problem with the baton exchange that costs someone on the final weekend of the season. You cannot practice that valuable skill enough. You're right. Today's presenting sponsor is Lodge Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at wildix.com. So they have called the runners to their lanes. And we are just about underway for Heat 1 in the girls' 4x200 meter relay. For Laramie, it's going to be Ariel Heitkamp scheduled to carry it first. Anna, Abby George going to carry it first for them. Not real sure what happened, but they just told the runners to come back up. So. We'll see what's going on here. Been a clean beat so far, Miles. We only had one stoppage of, of, of a, an event, and we weren't real sure what that was, if it was a disqualification or just a restart. I believe it was a restart on an error of the officials um, because we did see all the runners participate. So. That was the first uh, race yes, of the afternoon. Yeah, you're right. positions, whether it be on the back stretch, whether they run the curve the best, whether it be maybe they're a finisher, maybe they're a great starter. It is a lot of strategy. Now we're seeing that frontal baton, that frontal handoff used by a lot more schools, Miles. Allows the, the runner that's going to hand it off to continue to sprint through the exchange. Great race so far. Second runners for each team is getting ready to hand off to the third runners. Let's see who exchanges first. Maybe Fort Laramie. Fort yep. Laramie, maybe. That was Fort Laramie. Izzy Meyer carrying it for them right now. And the Redskins out in front. Fort Laramie. Don't 
look now, but Summer Country Day coming up on the inside. This is going to be a great finish. Can Fort Laramie hold on? As the anchor leg and a good handoff by those schools. We are going to have a dandy of a finish here. Fort Laramie. It's Summit Country Day. Summit it's Country Day closing quick. Summit Country Day coming up on the right side. It's Country Day. Country Day is going to take the lead, and they're going to win the girls four by 200 meter relay. Finish, or excuse me, followed by Fort Laramie. Those two squads will move on to tomorrow's finals. Look at the kick. Summit Country Day, Vanessa Carrington, the senior. How about those strides, Danny? Just it's the almost, power. Yeah, it's almost like she waited to get on the straightaway before she really kicked it in. And a great job mm -hmm. by Summer Country Day. Well, you talked about it. Picking the right anchor. So key. Absolutely. Let's take a look at Heat 2 miles for the girls, 4 by 200 meter relay. Yeah, and lane number 2 is going to be the ladies from Calvert. And lane 3, Worthington Christian. Lane 4, Dawson Bryant. Lane 5, Columbus Grove. Lane 6, Magador. And lane 7, Danbury. Columbus Grove with a time of 14395, just a little bit behind Dawson Bryant of 14352. Should be a really fun race. The Columbus Grove foursome, Allison Thompson, Devaney Pringle, Bree Clausen, and Jade Roeder. Those are all underclassmen, Danny. Sophomore, sophomore, freshman, and sophomore. Unbelievable for a school to get to the finals with no senior on the roster there. Our premier sponsor for Allen East is R.D. Jones Excavating. Serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes. Go Mustangs. And our premier sponsor for Marion Lopez is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. And we thank all of our sponsors for making today's state boys and girls track and field event happen, state semifinals from Welcome Stadium on the campus of the University of Dayton. He is just flying by. We are already in the four by two event. Boys are next up on the track. As they continue to do a great job here of running this meet. We are accustomed to being at the Jesse O on the campus of Ohio State because of some logistics. They've moved it to Dayton this year. Again, Dayton hosted the Boys and Girls State Basketball Tournament. They did a great job. And here we are for the state yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just under beautiful skies, perfect weather and they have ran a flawless meet as of today. But they should have all those workers get on the, the number one spot at the podium, right? right they deserve right. it. Absolutely. Championship effort. So lane five is the lane we'll be keeping an eye on here for this one is our local team, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, for the time of 1.43. The record in this event is Gates Mills Gilmore Academy, 2009, with a time of 141.3, which is blazing. Absolutely a fantastic time. And they are underway in this one. And we're watching lane five for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Allison Thompson was scheduled to start the sophomore. Get a good look right here on the exchange. Boy, it is a tight exchange. Three teams. Absolutely right. I love watching the girls and the guys run these curves here. That's where you see some people make up their times. Love running those curves. Stay on the inside. Stay tight to the line. They are moving on. There's your Grove Bulldogs right in the middle of it. They still got a great chance to qualify for tomorrow in lane. Five. That's Devaney Pingle, the sophomore, handing it off to Bree Clausen, the freshman for Columbus Grove. And Bree Clausen doing a, some serious damage right away. Bree Clausen is making some time for the Bulldogs. She's in second place, and she is running down the first place runner. Wow, she looks fantastic right now. Puts Columbus Grove in a position. All you got to do is hold serve right now. You don't have to win it. You just have to finish top two. 
and Grove with a chance to move on to the finals tomorrow. Is that a final finish that is going to be fantastic, Danny? Let's see who this is. And Grove is in second place in this one. And Miles, they're going to qualify for the finals tomorrow with a great effort from their third leg of that race. What a fantastic effort. Hey, hats off to Dawson Bryant, uh, their fourth anchor, their anchor that carried it fourth. Madison McDaniel, the senior, did a great job of pulling away here at the end. So Dawson Bryant High School goes 142.93, and the Grove Bulldogs goes 143.76. So the Bulldogs move on to tomorrow's finals. Heat three up next in the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. We've got one local team representing Northwest Ohio, and they sit in lane three. And that is St. Henry in lane three. Lane two is going to have Mooney in it. Lane four, Margareta. Lane five, Oberlin. Lane six, Montpelier. And lane seven, Colonel Crawford. Boy, this is going to be a tremendous race, Danny. All the time, so tight. Best ones, Margareta with 1-4-3, Oberlin with a 1-4-3. Those two teams uh, look like they're going to be the ones that are going to win it, but don't hold uh, a, a second thought of St. Henry because they're a 1-4-4, and Montpelier is a 1-4-4. Really a fantastic race in front of us. St. Henry's foursome, Morgan Baumer, a sophomore, Carly Boucher, a sophomore, Sam Lauber, a junior, and Riley Baumer, a senior. That's a fantastic foursome. Miles, I get people asking me all the time how the Northwest Ohio teams come down here, whether it be in Dayton or Columbus, and how they compete so well. And I tell them year in and year out, it's the competition they face every weekend in their invitationals, in their three-team meets, in their uh, conference championships. It's just unbelievable, the competition. So when they get here, they're used to top-quality competition. It, it's a credit to a lot of the conferences in Northwest Ohio and West Central Ohio because Instead of just taking the spring season off, they value that spring season they and they have it. tremendous track programs. Yeah, you're right. They really get after it. So we are just about underway here for the boys, excuse me, for the girls. Final heat here, heat three. We've already had several local teams compete. Columbus Grove just qualified and punched their tickets to tomorrow's finals. And that's the name of the game today. It's semifinal day. We have one championship race, and that was the boys and girls 4 by 800 meter relay. Everything else is a semifinal. It is a chance to move on to the finals. Tomorrow's where it all matters. A lot can happen overnight. We, we have <laughs> seen athletes much. the day before look just unbeatable, yes. and something happens overnight. Didn't get the rest, didn't eat well, didn't relax, didn't yeah, get enough fluids in them. You're absolutely right. And that, that is a good thing about today. It is not very hot. It is a very mild day, so not a lot of uh, you know fluids being taken in today. It's always good to take a lot of fluids in, but uh, we'll see how things go tomorrow. It's supposed to be a little bit warmer tomorrow, maybe five, six degrees warmer. We have seen athletes uh, kind of wilt underneath that heat also, right? Yeah, oh, they absolutely. looked great the day before. The, the very next day, this a different climate. Had a trouble adapting to it. They are just about underway here in the third heat. There's the set position, and we are underway. Heat three, girls four by 200 meter relay. Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday from Welcome Stadium at the University of Dayton here in Dayton, Ohio, for the boys and girls Ohio High School State Track and Field Championship. It is the 116th boys event, Miles, but the 39th girls event. 116th for the guys. We'll have to talk to our good friend Mark Shine. What? What was it like that first year first, that yeah. they ran? Excuse me, 49th for the girls. I said 39th, it's the 49th for the girls. So here they come, and it looks like Colonel Crawford in lane seven with the early lead. Now being pushed by Mount Pillier. Of course, they are in a staggered stance, so we'll see who gets to the uh, first handoff. Always tough to tell until the it closing is. seconds yeah. of that handoff exchange. You're right. There they go down the back stretch, and it is going to be a tight race here. As we knew the times that were so close, this was going to be a great run, and it has held form. You're absolutely right. So here comes the final leg of the girls' 4 by 2 over here. 
as they come around the curve, and we're going to have an absolutely fantastic finish. All these schools picked the right anchor because absolutely took off like a rocket as soon as it's in their hands. Montpelier in second. Trying to hold on. I don't know that Montpelier going to hold on for that second position, and they are not. And I'm just going to read on who finished first and second. I think that was Margareta that gets it done first. I believe you're right, and you're right. Margareta comes in at one. Oberlin finishes second. So Margareta and Oberlin will move on to tomorrow's finals. St. Henry finishes in the fourth position, followed by Mooney, followed by Colonel Crawford. Yeah, Margareta runs like that tomorrow. They're going to have a great shot. Mason Phillips, tremendous anchor. When we come back, the boys turn in the 4 by 200 meter race. Welcome back to the Boys and Girls State Track and Field Championships. Our title sponsor today is Altman Outdoor, bringing resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Altman Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls, and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Altman Outdoor is our title sponsor. It's the boys' turn, Miles, in the 4x2 relay. A lane two, Edgerton. Uh, lane three, Seneca East. Lane four, Marion Local. Lane five, Dalton. Lane six, Tenora. And lane seven, Anna. Uh, your best time to force them from Marion Local, but not much. One, two, nine. Uh, Dalton with a one, three, zero. So is Tenora, the one, three, zero. You take a look at Edgerton, a one, three, zero as well. Danny. This one should be fantastic. And the D3 state record has a little bit of local flavor. The Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds from 2014 with a time of 127.63, led by the great Nate Garlock. Coaching legend Coaching Nate Garlock. Coaching legend Nate Garlock. Coaching everything from you name it to you name it. You know, Nate uh, still keeps himself in fantastic sprinter condition also. <laughs> Marion Local gets off to a great start with Wesley Schoen, the senior, their third leg. Justin Nauf, and we saw him earlier today, how fantastic of a runner he is. Yeah, we've seen a lot of these kids from Marion Local who have really good football speed, and now they're bringing it over the track. Anytime you have a powerhouse football program, you always have a great track program. It always goes hand in hand. Well, speed is such a big part of football nowadays. Marion Local, one of those programs that can utilize speed and a little bit of physicality as well. So we are underway in the boys 4x200 meter relay. Again, the top time is very local at 129.59. Look at Anna out in front and a great start for the Rockets as they fly down the track. Yeah, it's Dustin Vasco, a freshman that was scheduled to get things started for Anna. Great job on the outside. That's a tough lane to run from out there. Lane seven, but the Rockets are really moving a long run as they continue to hold serve. And they are being pushed by Dalton. Tenora in the three hole, and Marion Loka with the best time is in the fourth position. So we'll see how that changes as we come to the third position in the relays. Really good work by Owen Ackerman, the senior for Tenora, keeping them in a close proximity to the top. And here comes Marion Local, and the Flyers have taken the lead. Well, all top four teams are just fantastic in this race. Look at this. It's Marion Local, Dalton. And I believe that's Seneca East, and Marion Local continues to hold serve as they'll go to the anchor leg. Marion Local had the first exchange, and it is Aiden Grisehop, the senior, carrying it and extending that lead. It's Marion Local, Seneca East, and Tenora. Side. Ryan Steingast for Tenora trying to get the second. Marion Local's going to win this heat easily as they'll move on to the finals. I think Steingast was able to get it done for Tenora to get that second spot. And you watch here as Marion Local comes across the line and a great job. Well, that was really as tight as you could get. And it's Marion Local. It is Tenora. The Rams move on to the finals tomorrow. Marion Local, Tenora, Dalton, Edgerton, Seneca East, and Anna. Anna finishes sixth, and they led quite a bit of that race. Alan East, I love it. Deacon Jones. Alan East Mustang with a great chance. Great relay team there.
tonight's premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wampak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Some, some great barbecue here in the air, Miles. And it is enticing, isn't it? It is enticing. Let's take a look at the field for the next race. All right, Mooney's going to be in lane number two, Van Buren in lane three. Margareta in lane four. Allen East, uh, they'll be led off by Deacon Jones himself in lane number five. Colonel Crawford in lane number six. And Bluffton in lane number seven. Danny, we thought that last race was real competitive. Times in this heat are really tight as well. Margareta with the best time of a 1-2-9. Van Buren, 1-3-0. Allen East, 1-3-0. Bluffton, 1-3-0. Everybody within two seconds of each other. It's going to be fun, fun, and more fun on this one. This is going to be a fun race. As these relays are very, very competitive here at the state track. And field. Gavin Bogart, the senior, is scheduled to start it for Bluffton. And Josiah Chapin for Van Buren, the junior, going to get things started for them. Absolutely gorgeous day here. Great job by the people of Dayton scheduling tremendous weather for today. <laughs> I was say, they, did, they could not have got a better weather day here at the state track and field championships. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. And we're in the shade, Miles. We're in the shade. Underway here in the boys four by 200 meter relay. Saw some outstanding performances already today as we await another one here from these teams. And the Knights committed 1.30. Wait time to see if they can make the BBC proud. A really good shot by our camera people right there capturing the exchange. And a good shot by Luffy. Jacob O'Neill on top cam getting all these runners. Pirates with an early lead here. Luffy and Allen East have squared off a ton this year, Miles. Gavin Bogart to Kaiser Young, the freshman, to Carson Cruz. And it's going to be Griffin Stackhouse for Bluffton that's going to finish it off. So here they come, the third runner in the boys' 4 by 200 meter relay, heat two. And if Alan East is going to make their move, they are in the fourth position right now, Miles. Let's see what they can do. They have an outstanding relay team. Yeah, they got a great closer in Trey Hensley, Trey though. The Hensley senior is just going to eat up track. He is fantastic. Trey Hensley takes the last baton there, and he is trying to make ground. Like we said, the top two teams move on to the finals. And right now, oh, he's in the third position. And they are going to finish fourth in this race. See who got the top spot here. I believe it's Margareta that gets the lead. Margareta, Margareta comes in. They'll move on to tomorrow's final. And the Van Buren Knights finish second as they move on to the final. Reed Harmon, the senior, tremendous job for Van Buren to climb up. But Margareta gets the win. Gage Bodie, the senior, fantastic effort. When we come back, it'll be more. Excuse me, more relays as the boys and girls 4x100 meter will take center stage right after these messages. Back here at the state boys and girls track and field championships. Today's premier sponsor for the Allen East Mustangs, R.J. Jones Excavating. Serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. R.J. Jones Excavating is the premier sponsor for Allen East saying, Go Mustangs. Miles, if the 4x1 read it, should the, the, the events are going to be a little bit out of order because some of the events are not semifinals, they're only final finals. That is correct. So they are doing a great job, though, of keeping this thing on they are. time. They are. Uh, this was scheduled to run at 5.30. It's at 5.42. Let's give you the uh, heats. Heat number one in lane two. SCD is going to be in lane two. Grand Valley Heights in lane three. West Liberty Salem in lane four. Columbus Grove in lane five. Lane six, Waynesdale. Lane seven, St. Henry. 
Uh, best time is at West Liberty Salem of 4.8.67. Uh, everybody's within a second or two of each other. Our local teams, Columbus Grove of 4.998. That is Thompson, Halty, Akmudi, and Roeder. That is all underclassmen, Danny. And St. Henry, Speck, Full Camp, Balmer, and Lauber. They have a time of 5.0.10. And Miles, that number four lane, West Liberty Salem, they've got young Delaney Jones in the middle of that pack. And we've seen her run already today. She was impressive earlier today. You always wonder, you know, you run so well early today, have a little bit of time off, if you're able to duplicate that same intensity. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Lodge Jewelry, your family owner and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. So, Miles, don't blink because this is a speed race and you will miss it. It's four runners, it's 100 meters apiece, and it is fun to watch. Yeah, don't get up and go to the kitchen on this one. <laughs> no. Stay here, watch it. It is over in a blink of an eye. It is amazing how quickly that baton gets around this track. The state record is Gates Mills Gilmore Academy in 2009, 48.70, which is blazing for a 4x1 team. You look at these times of 49.4 and 50.8. 48.7 is absolutely incredible. We are underway here in the girls 4x100 meter relay. Lane 5, Columbus Grove. Lane 7, St. Henry. So a good start for all the athletes as they get to the first exchange. I think uh, Columbus Grove was second on the exchange. Delaney Jones from West Liberty. Watch oh, her look miles. At her go. Look at her go. You want to talk about putting the West Liberty team in a great position. She just gave them a tremendous boost. They were first on the exchange on that leg and still carrying the lead onto this next let's exchange. See, yes, let's see if the Tigers can hold out the field off. West Liberty is in the lead. Here and comes Columbus Grove. Here come the Grove Bulldogs. And they look off to the left side. Cincinnati Country Summit Day on the far left. And West Liberty's gonna win it, followed by Cincinnati Country Summit Day, and Columbus Grove comes in third. Columbus Grove's just gonna have to wait and see if their time qualifies for tomorrow. Well, they ran a good race, but uh, Delaney Jones, probably the most impressive thing in this race. Well, and you, you can say to yourself, why do they put her in the second position? That's exactly why. They get a great start, and she comes down the back stretch and absolutely blows the field away. Yeah, Columbus Grove, good race. Uh, they came in third. Right about their, their time, uh, they were 4 nine, nine, eight coming in, finish at a 5-0. West Liberty Salem, the Tigers from Logan County move on. They will run in tomorrow's finals. Heat two miles, we've got three local teams with a little bit of Northwest Ohio flavor. Yeah, Cold Water is going to be in lane two, uh, Lake Center Christian in lane three, Trinity in lane four, Fort Recovery in lane five, Shannon Doa in lane six and Fort Laramie in lane seven. Another real competitive race with the Trinity at 4.917 hanging out in lane four with the best time. Fort Recovery right on their heels with a 4.9.19. If, just if, yes. comes close, I really like Fort Laramie with Izzy Meyer, the sophomore, and she'll be their closer. If it is close, Izzy Meyer, she can do a great job at the end of this race. Cold water, Fort Recovery, and Fort Warmy. From the local teams we'll be watching. It's an interesting cold water grouping with Brooklyn Sudoff, the freshman leading things off. She is a freshman. They have two juniors and one senior in that grouping coaches all around the state of Ohio when they're preparing for the teams. They always look for at least, you know, two sprinters who can really help them in a, in a relay event. You need, you need four, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. if you got two, you can make it work. You can, and I always think it's a good thing for tradition to make sure you're going to be good every year to have a, a, not a whole senior group, sure. right? Because then you got to rebuild for the next year. We're seeing some fine young uh, underclassmen today, and freshmen, sophomores, and juniors who are going to be carrying the torch the next few years. Yeah, good point. I don't remember seeing this many freshmen. No, I don't. You're right. In past years. No, it's been a fantastic day with underclassmen. So we are underway in this one again. Coldwater in lane two, full recovery in lane five, and Fort Morrie in lane seven. 
Boy, really tight exchanges on that one. Nobody misstepped on that exchange. You're right, what a great run we've had so far. Good exchanges all the way around for everybody in this race. Really, anybody's race still. As they come to the anchor leg. Lake Central is looking like they are the team to beat Trinity on the left side. Here comes Trinity. Is Trinity going to win this one? It is. No, oh. I do not believe oh. Trinity will qualify for the finals tomorrow, but they do not win that one. And see, Fort Recovery. Yep. What a run by the young ladies from Fort Recovery. Uh, Mara Pearson, the senior, just enough to keep Charlton from Trinity off her heels. Charlton just ran out of real estate. She did, she did. She came quick. She came quick. We've been picking up here a little bit as our papers are taking a fight here. Today's premier sponsor for Marion Local is OPAC for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. All and thank all of our sponsors, sponsors excuse me, for today's broadcast. We couldn't do it without you. Let's take a look at the assignments for the girls' third heat in the 4x1. Now we've been blessed with two really fun heats to call. This one's going to be just as good. It promises United in lane two, Montpelier in lane three, Margarita in lane four, Colonel Crawford in lane five, lane six, Delta St. John's, and lane seven, Worthington Christian. Delphi St. John's has a time of a 4-9-3-3. A best time in this one. I keep an eye on Margareta, who's had a really good day as a team at a 4-9-9-4. Delphi St. John's in lane six with the great Alex Kesson. And Kesson will be running the closer position. Ava Hershey, the sophomore, will lead things off. Kirsten Jackson, the junior. On the second leg, Lila Jackson, a freshman. And then you said, Kesson, she will be the anchor. If you're Alex Kesson, if you're any of these anchor runners, in your mind you're thinking, if you can just keep it close, I can take it home. Yeah, think about this too. A freshman that is running the leg in front of her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you're gonna, come on, freshman, keep this thing going. <laughs> so, fun day of track and field here at the University of Dayton Ball in the Stadium. Dayton Hort, Miles Holiday for WSN's coverage of the state track and field championships. We'll be here all day tomorrow at two miles. Jennifer Beck will join us in the booth and uh, another great day of track and field on WS. I get the pleasure of interviewing athletes yes, afterwards yeah, on the yeah. infield. Yeah. Hopefully I'm interviewing a lot of state champs. Absolutely, I'll be in the booth with uh, Jennifer. So another great broadcast coming your way. So they are underway. We've seen outstanding handoffs today, guys. Outstanding handoffs. Hey, good foreshadowing by you as they Follow that up with a great exchange. Here they come, the second runners running great down the back stretch. As the third runners get the baton as they head to the anchor leg. This one's going to be super tight. Three teams look like they have a chance to win it on this straightaway. Delphi St. John's, John's is going to win it. You're right, Delphi St. John's. We talked about on. Alex Kesson being able to finish it off, and they kept it tight. They were had the best time coming into this and able to hold a serve gets the win. Delphi St. John's moves on along with Colonel Crawford, and the rest of the schools have to wait their fate. When we come back, more speed on the track. The boys, 4 by one hundred meter rule. You're watching high school track and field. Welcome back to Welcome Stadium here on the campus of the University of Dayton for today's Boys and Girls Ohio High School State Track and Field Championship. Up next on the track, the boys 4x100 meter relay. Now lane two, LeBray. Lane three, Colonel Crawford. Lane four, United. Lane five, Versailles. Lane six, Edgerton. And lane seven, Independence. Your best time in this field is United with a 4-3-3-2. Uh, 
Versailles, though, not too far away, 4-3.84. Uh, Edgerton is a close uh, proximity also with a 4-4. Your two locals, uh, Versailles and Edgerton. It's going to be Tyler Baraga starting it off for Versailles and Dakota Berkey, the senior for Edgerton. And, Miles, we just heard over the PA that there's going to be a runoff for the eighth position in the boys' 100-meter dash. What an event a runoff is. 15,000 people and two athletes on the track trying to get to tomorrow's finals. If you don't like attention, don't be in that race. <laughs> that is going to be fantastic. We're going to cover that for you, that runoff of those two young men, the last two trying to get into tomorrow's finals in the boys' 100-meter dash. So for sales in lane five, Edgerton in lane six with some Northwest Ohio flavor there. <laughs> They are underway. So I have not heard of the number four United. I've not heard of them. LeBray is a school that I'm not familiar with. So sometimes you get these schools that uh, are new to the state track and field. That helps you understand the map of Ohio oh, sure when you does. come here. Yeah, it sure does. So a great start. The top time all time in Division Three is Dayton Jefferson in 1986 and Columbus Bishop Hartley with a 4-2-0 and a 4-2-3. Everybody's done a great job in the top four spots of getting themselves in a position to win this one. But it's Colonel Crawford, I believe. It's nope, United. it's United that has United. the shot to win it. And United is going to win this race. And the team we just spoke about, who is new to the Ohio High School Track and Field Championship, United comes in with a time of 43.4. And Edgerton gets the second position. And you hear the Edgerton faithful cheering on their boots. Dakota Berkey, Owen Roth, Joe Walkup, and uh, Carter Herman for Edgerton grabbed that second spot. And it's all about moving on today. Today, there's seven final days. Everybody just trying to get to the finals. And you're right, Ross, you never know what can happen with injuries or kids getting sick or things happen. So the relay teams could change by tomorrow. And I know coaches and parents will tell the athletes, go in your hotel room, relax, don't do anything. But I'm telling you, Danny, every year I stay at a hotel down here, there are some athletes that aren't really resting. No nope, packed. Well, all their friends are here, all their families here. Everybody's excited. You want to talk about the big day's events, but you got to focus on what's in it. It has to be a business trip. It has to be a business trip. Heat two, Miles. Let's take a look at the field. Heat two, uh, lane number two. It's going to be Bluffton, uh, lane three, Mommy Fun Valley Country Day, lane four, Marion Local, lane five, Black River, lane six, Nelsonville, York, and lane seven, Trinity. Your best time in this heat is authored by Black River, 433, but Marion Local really close with a 4.3.63. Uh, your Bluffton runners going to lead it off with Noah Bricker. And then Mary Local, Braden Havleka is going to start things off for them. And Lane 5, the team from Black River, they may sound familiar to some of you football fans out there as they have come to Northwest Ohio the last couple of years and played the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. So you'll recognize Black River from those football is that, days. that song, Black River? No, is that it's Moon River. Oh, that's Moon is. River. Yeah, okay. Besides that, I don't want to hear that anymore. You've never had one singing lesson. I no, know you that, haven't. I can that's tell surprising, that. isn't it? There you go. We get the buzzer from the booth. Yeah, our <laughs> producer Ken Reeker, not a big fan no, of. Ken Reeker knows good music. He loves jazz. He knows, you know, contemporary. He knows yacht rock music. Well, when I think of jazz, I think of Ken Reeker. Right? When we go out of commercial, we should be taken out by sailing from Christopher Cross. Yacht rock. That's right. <laughs> Let's round out that foursome for Bluffton, uh, Bricker, Dearth, Kaiser Young, and Griffin Stackhouse, Mary Local, Havleka, Nauf. Boy, Justin Nauf, he's going to be Justin one tired Nauf, guy. Yeah, he's fantastic. He does a great job. Cal Adi and Carter Jones. Those are two teams that have very familiar names. Yeah, Kyle Adi looks like he's in the anchor position, I believe, for the Flyers. Is that Kyle Adi? No, maybe it's not. They have him scheduled to run the third okay, leg yeah, with Carter right. Jones as okay, the closer. They have, you're right. It is Carter Jones down there. I can see the athlete, but he just turned around, and that is not Kyle Adi. Then I can look across the field, and I can see Kyle Adi in the third position. A lot of, lot of uh, Kyle Adi in football this fall. Fantastic game for the Flyers. You know they're pretty good at football. I've heard. Yes, I've heard yeah, there's yeah. a little picture. Listen, I say it every time. Don't leave and play the regular season. Start them out in the semifinals because they're going to wind up there no matter what. Right. <laughs> so we're watching lane two and lane four. Bluffton and Marion Local. The 
best time is Mommy Valley Country Day at 44.09. Very uncomfortable delay here. It is a very uncomfortable delay. <laughs> Underwear. I've heard athletes say the longer you're in the blocks, the heavier your feet feel. Well, it should be it should be about a half second to a second, maybe a second and a half at the most. Monte Valley Country Day with a nice lead. They get to the baton first. But you look in the middle of that track. Here come the Flyers. Kyle Adi gets the baton, and here comes Adi and the Flyers as they go around the curve, trying to get to Carter Jones, the fourth place runner. And the Flyers trying to get there. They get the handoff first, and there's a fall on the track. We saw athletes go, and it's Marion Local, and it's Black River. Marion Local and Black River competing for the one-two position, and it's going to be tight, Miles. I believe Black River may have got them, but either way, Marion Local goes to yeah, look at the lean by Alex Wolfram from Black River. You're going to see it right uh, here as he leans Please, forward. Yeah, I think he might have got it got with it. that lean. Yeah, and they have not put the results up on the board yet as we are still awaiting that. Yeah, it's terrible to see the collision behind the leaders. Yeah, that was an awful fall. And they'll sort that out. Yes, Black River does get the win. They'll move on to the finals. And Marion Local, a 4-3-5 for Black River, a 4-3-5-8, one-tenth of a second difference between those two. And Marion Local moves on to the finals. 8-3's got some Northwest Conference flavor to it, Miles. Sure does. In lane two, it's going to be Convoy Crestview. Lane three, Allen East. And two local teams in uh, Northwest Ohio. And lane number Four is going to be Seneca East, lane five, Margareta, lane six, Mooney, and lane seven, Cristo Ray. And Crestview, Convoy Crestview in the two lane, and the great Dave Bowen sitting right center stage in this crowd. You know he'll be rooting on his nights. Well, let's hope that Dave didn't give him any sprinting instructions. Well, you know, when we came up to the booth, we saw Dave out there signing autographs for some young kids. And uh, boy, was they, uh, they they were excited, and they just kept going, Mr. Brandway, Mr. Brandway. They thought he was Tom Brandway. Well, it is always good to see Diamond Dave Bowen yeah. anywhere he goes. He is always a celebrity. And uh, let's talk about the foursome for Crestview. It is going to be Leith, Putnam, Harding, and Putnam. Allen East, a foursome of Deacon Jones, Freisner, Schaefer, and then Trey Hensley, who we know is a tremendous closer for them. Isn't it fun to watch Trey Hensley when he gets the baton in the anchor position, does a great job. And you know that Allen East and Crest are very familiar with each other, running just a week or two, excuse me, two weeks ago in the Northwest Conference Championship. I always love watching Hensley run because he runs angry, right? He does. He, he, does. he looks like he's going to catch you because he's mad. He's mad. <laughs> That is a great comparison, Trey Hensley. Great football player and a great track star for the Mustangs. Boy, the wind has really picked up here at Welcome Stadium. It is a nice breeze. The good thing for the runners, it's going to be behind them. Yes. On the straightaway nearest us, on the other side, you're going to be running into it. I believe. All right, Seneca East finishes second. Margareta won. Seneca East second. And Allen East four, Crestview five. So 
Allen East Crest, you're going to have to wait and see if they make it in. It's kind of a disappointing finish for those two schools, but who knows, maybe they'll get in. And Margaretta's with Gage Bodie again, the, the closer for them. Second time we've called him, doing a great job uh, holding it off so they can win. Crystal Ray, fantastic early. Couldn't keep it up. When we come back, it'll be the girls' turn. A 400-meter dash, one lap around the track. You're watching high school track and field on WOSN. <laughs> Girls, four by 400 meter dash. Oh. Audrey Alec from Coldwater, Ava Reed from Anna. The two runners will be watching closely in this one for the girls' 400 meter dash. It's okay, Mom. It's got a little confused. I got you. Buddy. Did thanks. Yeah, thanks okay. for picking me up, brother. One lap around the track. The state record miles is. Sydney Sin from Wayne Trace last year, a blazing time of 55 seconds. I loved watching her run. She was fantastic. She was absolutely fantastic. One of the best high school athletes we've ever seen in track game. She was, she was fantastic. Here they come down the home stretch. And it looks like Olivia Saylor from Margareta has the lead as she tries to finish this one off. And she's being pushed by Olivia Hudson from Oberlin. What a finish we have as those two battle it out for one and two. And Hudson might get it. And you are correct as she does. Those two move on to the state finals. That's a tough race. I'm telling you, that's as tough a race as there is in track and field, the 400 meter day. Well, it's one of those races, Danny, where your body just tells you you can't go anymore. All caught up there, buddy. We have a phone book in front of us with our information. Three different sections. Area codes. It's all in the Spanish. I don't know anything. I can't read. Let's take a look at 18 miles. All right. Our only local runner from Farallon, the Jets. Well, if I'm on the right sheet, and I believe that you I are, am. You are correct. Uh, lane two, Aaliyah Barqueen from Tuscaloosa Valley. Lane three, Natalie Ryan from Worthington Christian. Lane four, Addison Swergen from Fairlawn. Lane five, Maddie Lengacker from Smithville. Lane six, Carly Bissecker from Covington. And lane seven, Faith Donnelly from Lee Fairfield. So again, the state record holder, Sydney Sin from Wayne Trace, and she was fantastic. One of those athletes, Danny, when you got a chance to interview her too, it just exuded all kinds of confidence and happiness. And she was uh, the captain of the glitter team, made sure all the runners for Wayne Trace had the, the ribbons in the hair, had the glitter on the face, they were ready to go. Yeah, you know, you, you get those athletes that really just capture the, the, the spirit of track and field, and all of Northwest Ohio watches them. Uh, and you and I both do TV and radio, and there's a lot of kids like that that we interview, and just, you know, they stay with you for a long, long time. Of course, when we interview athletes, we always like those ones that will pontificate a little bit, not right. the yes, <laughs> no, no answers. No, I ran fast. <laughs> <laughs> do you like track? I do. I do like track. I wear my shoes. <laughs> that is one of the fun parts of our job it when is. we get to talk to high school athletes. It sure is. So a great meet so far today at the University of Dayton. The folks should be very proud of the way they've ran this meet as it has moved along very smoothly. We've only had one stoppage, and that was the first race of the day, Miles. And since then, it's been flawless. A little bit behind the time, but that's as expected. As uh, you know, these, look, there's a lot of athletes and a lot of moving parts out there. And sometimes when you're getting things ready to go, it's like herding cats. You're absolutely right. They're underway in heat two in the girls' 400-meter dash. And Maddie Langinger from Smithville taking an early lead. Middle of the track. And they are running directly right into the wind right now. All bunched up there in the middle of the track. Four girls right now in the, in the lead position, we could call it. Swearingen still has an opportunity to win this. As they come around the last curve here, head for the home stretch. And the girls four by, or excuse me, the girls 400 meter dash. You see Swergen right there, striding it out, trying to keep Maddie Leggecker yeah, off it is. Yeah, it is going of to be Swearinger from Fairlawn and Langager from Smithville, 1-2. They'll move on to tomorrow's finals. 
This is a look, this is a tough race to recover from. When you go out here and qualify for the semifinals and you knock down a minus one minute lap, and then you have to come right back in less than 24 hours. That's a tough ask. Well, you think about too on that back stretch when you're running directly into the wind in your face, that can really take it out of you. Absolutely. So one more heat, and we've got three athletes with local flavor. In lane two, Julie Tompkins from Magador, her teammate in lane three. Ari Tompkins from Magador, lane four, Angela Williams from South Central, lane five, Lauren Loddick from Kaleida, lane six, Marissa Bonham from Riverdale, and lane seven, Claire Bonham from Minster. The last two runners, Bonham and Bonham from Riverdale and Minster, both freshmen in this, Danny. Um, we have, uh, let's see here, uh, almost over 20 runners and only two of them, have, and all of them have ran under sub one minute and the other two with a minute time. That's just incredible. You see it every year, that time just keeps dwindling, doesn't it? It does. It's always fun, Miles, to come down here to the state track and field meet. And I love looking at the crowd and seeing the college coaches, not only track and field coaches, but I remember sitting down here a couple years ago and Charlie Strong, the former head coach of the University of Texas, I sat right beside him. We talked. He was here scouting Denzel Ward. Hey, they want to see how good an athlete you are. They want to see how fast you are. Well, they're going to see Angela Williams from South Central with the best time in it at 5728. <laughs> Lauren Loddick from Polida, the sophomore, close with a 5791. I feel the temperature dropping. It sure has. It sure has. I start to see some athletes getting hoodies back out. Nice and cool night tonight. Tonight's premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Delphus, Wapak, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Set position. Underway in the girls 400 meter dash, heat three. Marissa Bonham from Riverdale with a nice start. And she's got an early lead going down the back stretch there. See if she can hold off and see if the Falcon can get to tomorrow's finals. A freshman, Miles. A freshman. Two Bonhams are both a freshman in this. Sometimes it helps to be young. You don't really think too much, right? <laughs> what are you scared of? Just, just run. race, that's right. Uh, looks like uh, Lauren Loddick from Kaleida. It's Lauren Loddick and Marissa Bonham from Riverdale and Kaleida in the one-two position. And those two young ladies battling it out. And we're going to have a dandy of a finish. And it's Marissa Bonham. It's Lauren Loddick as they go one-two. Lodic might have enough in the tank to finish it. And it's going to be Lodic winning. And Marissa Bonham from Riverdale finishes second. A sophomore and a freshman. You don't see a photo finish often in that race, but those two were fantastic. When we come back, Miles, it's the boys' turn in the 400-meter dash. You're watching High School Track and Field on WLSC. Welcome back to Welcome Stadium here on the campus of the University of Dayton. Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday from WSN's coverage of the Boys and Girls State Track and Field Championships semifinal day here. And it's the boys 400 meter dash miles. It's one lap around the track. You love this race, don't you? I do, I absolutely do. It, it is a very, it is an endurance race and it shows the strengths of each of the athletes. All right, let's take a look at some of the contestants in this. Lane number two, Aiden Wagtail from Valley Kamari Glenn from Lima Perry in lane three. Evan Hudson from Oberlin in lane four. Abe McElwee from Tuscarora Valley. In lane six, Jacob Rombach from Calvert. In lane seven, Garrett McKinsey Kaninis from Oak Hill. So Kamari Glenn from Lima Perry, the junior miles has qualified for four events this weekend. An outstanding track and field season. He was the runner of the year in the Northwest Central Conference. And uh, big shout outs to that young man as he tries to qualify here in the 400 meter dash. And a big weekend for him too, Danny. Even if he doesn't win anything, he's just a junior. So this experience will propel him into his senior year. So here they go as they go down the back stretch. And Kamari Glenn is sitting comfortable right now. He's in the fifth position. 
Plenty of time to make up right now as they go around the last curve. This is where you see the best separate themselves is on that last curve as the strength and conditioning go into play right here. Right now, Evan Hudson from Oberlin has the lead. As he heads down, he is being followed closely by Abe McAuley from Tuscaroras Valley. And it's going to be Evan Hudson from Oberlin and Abe McAuley from Tuscaroras Valley. Evan Hudson, impressive. I don't think he broke stride ever once. No, he looks great. Yeah, man. look how comfortable he is as he finishes this race. And I love the approach that uh, Abe McElwee takes here. He's already got second place locked up. He just kind of coast in, not wasting any energy. Yeah, save some for tomorrow. Absolutely. Heat two is up next, and some sophomores and juniors dominate this field. Raleigh Newton in lane two from Harden Northern, the sophomore. Lane three, Jew model, model Ski from Lowellville. Cody Hessler from North Adams in lane four. Christian Davis from Brookfield in lane five. Lane six, Seth Cooker from Newton Local. And lane seventh, Tavin Scholl from Antwerp, the junior with a 5 -0 Best time in this is Riley Newton at 4.99. Oh, correction, the best time in this is Christian Davis from Bookfield at 4.861. Danny Tavin Scholl from Antwerp, he's a young guy that we've seen play football, and he is a tremendous athlete as is Riley Newton from Harden Northern. The sophomore standout at a time of 49.29. Every time, 50 seconds or better in this race, which is absolutely amazing. The state meet record set in 2008. Joe, jo, excuse me, John Jenny from Bluffton at a time of 47.46. That's the state meet record. The Division Three all-time record is Andrew Pierce from Yellow Springs in 1997 with a time of 47.36. Hey, Cody Hessler in lane four from North Adams, the lone senior in this grouping. The rest are all sophomore or juniors. Got a good chance to return again next year. <laughs> Megan Sherrick, Jacob O'Neill, manning the cameras down there. Give us a wave, Jacob, let us know you're here. And he just stares. Just look at those steel eyes in that young man. That's why he's a great cameraman. Jacob is a focused young man, does he a is. great job. Megan Sherrick does a great job also. And of course, Ken Reeker producing Ken, this. Ken Reeker is the best in the business. The best in the business. They don't get any better than Ken. He and I, jazz buddies. Runners are in their set position. This is a long wait for this one, Miles. Got to be very uncomfortable as you sit there. Yes, it is. There's the step. There's the gun, and they take off, and they are underway. Lanes to keep an eye on Riley Newton in lane two from Harden Northern, and Tavin Scholl from Antwerp in lane seven. We had six runners scheduled to compete in this one. Only five are running. Gaining some ground here as he comes around the curve. The polar bear looking good as he's trying to get into that second position. And Riley Newton just striding it out. And Newton, what a great job he's doing here. Let's see who's going to finish 1 2. I believe it's going to be Christian Davis that gets the win. All right, and I was. And I was wrong with Riley Newton. I had Riley Newton in the second position. That's Cody Hessler from North Adams. And Riley Newton finishes fourth. So both of them had black and yellow. One more heat here in the boys' 400 meter dash. And it is full of Northwest Ohio runners. Uh, lane two, Wesley Schoen from uh, Marion Local, the senior, time of five, 0 0.06. Lane three, Mike, Mikey Pendergast from Van Buren, the junior with a 4.986. Lane four, Connor Baldoff from Lincoln View, the senior with a 4.916. Lane five, Samuel Haley from Pettisville, the senior with a 4.927. Lane six, Kellen Becker from Northmore, the junior with a 4.957. Lane 7, Aiden Apple from New Middleton Springtown, Springfield, 
the junior with a 5-0-2-0. Danny, these times are really tight. Unbelievable. They're right within a tenth of a second of each other at 50.0, 49.8, 49.1. So this is going to be a really good race as the final two spots up for grab here for tomorrow's finals. A beautiful day for track and field as we've talked about it all. Broadcast long, the weather has really cooperated. Well, it's nice and cool here on Thursday afternoon, state semifinals, Division Three. Glad to be bringing you the Ohio High School State Track and Field event. Would you say it's like a golf where they say it's moving day? Getting yourself in position to win it? Absolutely, it's moving day. We're on the back nine right now, just trying to you know, go into doing the clubhouse. Oh, we'll no. for a tradition like none other. Hello, friends. Plenty more track and field. Stick around, folks. Up next on the track, the girls' 300-meter dash. We'll finish it up with the boys and girls 200 meter dash. State semifinal day. Everybody trying to get those positions for tomorrow's finals for a chance to win a state high school track and field championship for their school. Runners are in the set position. And we're underway in the third heat of the boys 400 meter dash. Good start there by Aiden Apple from New Middletown Springfield. He got out of the blocks quick. Didn't have that long pregnant pause like no, the last no. key. It was a good start, a really good start, a quick start. Look at Connor Baldoff from Lincoln View down the middle of the track. Miles trying to make his way through the field. Trying to set himself up to get in a good position to run that last bit of the 400 meter dash. A real impress that their strides are remaining is Efficient on that turn. Down the stretch they come. And called off from Lincoln View is in the second position, and he knows he's going to qualify for tomorrow. Good run for that young man as we await the leaderboard to see who finishes in this one. It's like Samuel Haley from Pettisville, called off from Lincoln View. The top two finishers in that race, and the others have to wait and see. Yeah, Haley came in with the second best time of 4927. Good run by him. When we come back, it's the girls' 300 meter hurdles. Maybe, maybe the toughest race in track and field. You're watching high school track and field on WOSN. Back here at Welcome Stadium, as the girls' 300 meter hurdles take center stage. Tonight's title sponsor is Altamont Outdoor, bringing resort style living to your backyard every day. Also, our presenting sponsor, Loudix Jewelry. Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for 70 years in Van Wert. Miles, let's take a look at the heat number two for the girls, 300 meter hurdles. This is star studded, isn't it? it look is. at the names. Oh, my goodness. Liv Lindemann from Delphus Jefferson, the senior. She is a 4651 in lane two. Jesse Burgai from Ottaville, the senior, a 4655. Azure Travis from Woodmore, the impressive senior, a 4475. Ariel Heitkamp from Fort Laramie, the junior with a 4-4.84. Kendall Palti from Columbus Grove, the sophomore with a 4-6-3-6. Kayana Matsuda from Fort Recovery, the senior, a 4-6-8-2. Danny, this is going to be electric. <laughs> and if it's your Travis from Woodmore in lane four sounds familiar, it's because she has the fastest time in the 100-meter dash in the state of Ohio. And here she is in the 300 meter hurdles. You think she's going to be good at this? It's a great ensemble <laughs> cast, isn't it? This is going to be tremendous. A who's who of tremendous hurdlers in this race. Liv Lindemann, Douglas Jefferson, Burgai from Ottaville, Pike Camp from Fort Warming, Palti from Grove, and Matsuda from Fort Wicom. You gotta believe that Azure Travis is gonna get out of the blocks quick if she can get to that first hurdle. You gotta believe. We've seen that. Yeah, we have. And look at Travis go. She does get out of the blocks really quick, Miles. And look at that form. She just flies over those hurdles. As she is the first one to the second hurdle, and she is blazing down the track. Yeah, she ran earlier today that it didn't even look like hurdles were in front of her. No, it did not. 
so impressive. Snap and just continue. And there's Liv Lindemann on the outside. And she's trying to get into that second position. She's got a work cut out for her as Ariel Heitkamp from Fort Laramie right now is in the second position. Travis is going to win this one. The second place is coming down to Lindemann and Heitkamp, and it's going to be Heitkamp from Fort Laramie. Azure Travis from Woodmore, Ariel Heitkamp from Fort Laramie, they get the automatic bids to the final. Azure Travis was very impressive earlier, continues to be super impressive as you see her get the win right there. Barely another competitor in the screen as she finishes. Yeah, Miles, by the second hurdle, she was clearly out in front, and uh, then she just kind of coasted the rest of the way knowing she had a comfortable lead. Heat three is up, and we get to see some more local athletes in Rylan Jones and Grace Mole. Now lane number two, Kendall Rawl from Riverdale, the senior with a 4670. Lane three, Olivia Todd, Black River, a senior with 4598. The lane four, Ryland Jones. Allen East, the junior with the best time in this at 4477. Lane five, Sammy Rutuno from Mooney, the junior with a 4556. Lane six, Grace Muller from Marion Local, the sophomore, a 4595. And lane seven, Graceland Lamoureux from South Central, the senior, a 4706. Again, your best time, Ryland Jones from Allen East, the junior with a 44. 7-7. Seven, seven. As I've said it before and I'll continue to say it, I believe the two toughest races in track and field are the 400 meter dash and the 300 meter hurdles. And you, you look at the hurdles and it's, it's just an absolute bear of a race. Not only are you running maybe, almost, I should say maybe, almost a full lap jumping hurdles in the middle. Of A great shot right there as you get the opportunity to see them get themselves settled into the blocks ready to go. Danny, what should the viewer be looking for right here as they come out of these blocks? Well, as I said it earlier, you want to get that great start. You want to, And here's the thing, if you can get over that hurdle clean, the first one, and you've got your stride set, you can really make some advancements toward that second hurdle, and it's all about getting out of it. We, look, when I coach, we practice uh, starts every single day. And I know that sounds monotonous and boring, but starts are so important. Well, you saw the Robo Cam bouncing up and down a little bit. That's an indicator of how windy it has gotten here. Yeah, so look at Ryland Jones, a terrific job. The Mustang is out in front, and she got to that hurdle quicker than anybody. Here comes Ryland Jones. You can see it in her. She wants to go into the finals, and right now she leads in the third heat of the girls' 300-meter Watch Ryland Jones snap and then just continue to sprint. No wasted motion. She is impressive. Yes, she is, Miles. I'm telling you, Ryland Jones is blowing the field away, and she's got a chance to win a state title tomorrow, and she's going to qualify easily in the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Miles, that was impressive. Danny, she was so far in front, she could have turned backwards and finished up without even having to worry about losing that one. So I'm here to tell you, she's going to put Azure Travis on notice because that was a heck of a run. That's going to be a tremendous matchup tomorrow. Ryland Jones. Sammy Rutuno from Mooney qualifying for the finals. When we come back, it's the boys' turn in the 300 meter. Welcome back to Welcome Stadium. Tonight's premier sponsor for our state track and field meet is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. No chickens on the track now, Miles. These kids are all brave hearts as they run down the field. Is there a better chicken finger in the business there's than Lee's? No. Not. There's not. It's unbelievable how good those are. Yeah. All right, heat number one in lane two, Nick Carey from Van Buren, the junior with a 3983. Lane three, Nathan Kokovich from Warren JFK, the junior with a 40.55. Braxton Barnett from Shenandoah, the sophomore with a 3792. Carter Herman in lane five from Edgerton, the senior with a 3935. Trevor Vogt in lane six from Colonel Crawford, the a senior with a 3.965 and lane seven, Leighton Blankenmeyer from Columbus Grove, the junior with a 4.060. What's impressive about this, Miles, Braxton Barnett from Shenandoah, the sophomore has the best time in the state mm -hmm. of Ohio at 37.92. And the reason I point that out is the young man is a sophomore. He had to be recognized in the hurdles in junior high, which was two years ago. 
He's only been running <laughs> hurdles, let's say, for the last couple of years, and right now he has the fastest time in the state of Ohio. And you've coached track, and yes. it is tough to get kids at a young age say, we want you to run hurdles, and they look at you, uh, no, yeah, you no, I could yeah. fall. Yeah, and it's, it's really uh, important for coaches to, you know, let kids try a lot of events in the junior high level so they can understand what, you know, what they have to do to get better at each event, but also so the coaches can recognize, hey, that young man can do hurdles or that young lady can do long jump. It's really, really important. I always like to remind kids that, you know, you, you, not that you could fall. It's no, you're, going you're, going, no, you're going to. You're, you're going to trip over a, to a hurdle fall. at one point yeah. in time. And I love the kids that say, let's do this, coach. They yeah. put the hurdles in front of me, and uh, you love to see the aggressiveness. And young Braxton Barnett, I'm excited to watch him. And the Shenandoah team, a uh, sophomore with a 37.92. Top time of all time in this is John Lint. I was at that meet at Columbus Academy 2014. That young man ran a 36.32. Braxton Barnett, not far off that. He's going to have an opportunity in the next two years after this year uh, one thing that they're doing really well here, Danny, is on the Jumbotron here in the stadium, they're cutting to the uh, field events and showing the camera work. Uh, we just saw some guys shoot the shot put. A fantastic job by the people here at Dayton, getting everything, uh, a potpourri of track, if you will. A potpourri of track, if you will. So the red flag is out. We're a little ahead of schedule here with the state track and field event. Take a look at our sponsors tonight. We want to thank Ultimate Outdoor. We want to thank Laudich Jewelry. We want to thank Jones Excavating. We want to thank OPEC and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. So all of our sponsors, our sales department does a terrific job of going out and getting these events sponsored. We certainly appreciate every sponsor that we have, especially Lee's Chicken. Right, Love famous. that chicken. Right. <laughs> I can eat it every day. When it, <laughs> Try to remind them uh, any time I'm there. Hey, I'm with WOSN. We right. a little extra helping, you please. Want, you want freebies? That's right. <laughs> Mashed potatoes, gravy, whatever you got. Uh, <laughs> you, you brought up the best thing they do right there. Mashed potatoes and gravy are hands down the best. Everything they do there is so good. Fantastic. We're waiting on this. I was, uh, your, your, uh, your recap of today's events, we saw a lot of great runners. And, and let's be honest, we've talked about it. Azure, Will, Azure Travis may be the best <laughs> runner we've seen all oh, day. Oh, so impressive indeed, right? Can't wait to see that showdown tomorrow. Oh, oh Ryland Jones. Jones. <laughs> That's going to be a great race. We'll be calling that for you. So stick around as Ryland Jones from Allen East takes on Azure Travis from Woodmore High School. What a race that's going to be. So we're about 20 seconds away from getting the call. This is scheduled to go at 6.45. Red flag said that we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Crew here has done a really good job. We were behind early, but not too far behind where they didn't get things back on schedule. A beautiful day. Uh, if you look out in the middle of the field, the Dayton Public School logo, and they've got the Dunbar Wolverines. This is where they uh, call their home field. Which I've always wondered, all right, you're in the middle of Ohio. This is Buckeye country. Everybody knows about that team up north, and they're kicking around a mascot idea. <laughs> someone says, Wolverines. let's go Wolverines, and someone says, okay, let's yeah. do that. Come on, Dayton. you got to be better. <laughs> Braxton Barnett will be blazing time of 37-9. The sophomore is the favorite in this race. They're in the set position. And away they go. It's the boys' 300-meter hurdles. And it is Braxton Barnett with a slight lead. He's the first one over the hurdle. He's the first one over the second hurdle. And the sophomore with the long strides is taking the lead here the boys 300 meter hurdles and he is every bit as advertised miles as he is running a strong race and he is out in front of the field and no wasted motion on that back leg is there no he's getting a lot of competition from trevor vote from colonel crawford and vote has the lead braxton barnett trying to come on the left side and it is going to be trevor vote with the upset win trevor vote with a 39.65 wins the heat and he defeats braxton barnett that's going to be a showdown tomorrow. They sure will. Good thing for Braxton Barnett, though. Top two move on. He is in that top two, but 
Trevor Vogt, impressive run by him. Yeah, he just never let up, and he came around the curve, and he almost looked like he got a little bit stronger. So heat two is on the track right now, and it is full of Northwest Ohio flavor as three runners will compete. A lane two, Lucas Hartle from Jackson Center, the senior with a 4 0 3 7. Lane three, Dylan Garrett from Covington, a sophomore 4 0 1 9. And lane four, Michael Baloney from Lowellville, the senior with a 3 8 2 8. Lane five, Braylon O'Neill from Black River, the senior with a 3 9 1 2. Lane six, Andrew Pullman from Marion Local, the junior with a 4 0 .10. And lane seven, Keegan put off from Corey Ross in the senior with a 4 0 1 6. So everybody in this heat under the 42nd mark, as I said earlier, the state meet record is John Lint from Columbus Academy in 2014, ran a 36.32. I was fortunate enough to be at that event, and that young man ran like he was angry. Really good 300 meter hurdle. Hey, you want to run determined, but you don't want to run like you're really angry because what's that do to your muscles? It tightens you up, sure. right? You yeah. want to be loose on this. Determined, intensity, all good, but make sure you're controlling your body. So many people don't understand that the weight room is such a big part of track and field. A stronger athlete is a better athlete, and these young men and women get in the weight room, and it really, really helps them when we get this late in the season. I do notice that more and more track athletes spend time in the weight room. However, they spend a lot of time, too, on flexibility, oh, don't they? absolutely. Can't be flexible enough. Miles, we used to do core training every day when I was a head coach, and core training is so important. In the middle of that body, getting those stomach muscles prepared, and it really paid off for a lot of our athletes. Well, anybody that gets an opportunity to visit with you, they will see how important your core is. Oh, absolutely. The six-pack I carry around. <laughs> Boy, is it easy for you to hurt people. <laughs> to see if we can't block out that part of the ball. We, we all have abs, <laughs> right? Yeah. In the set position. And away we go in the second heat in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. It was, boy, that was a really, really tight first it sure was. First hurdle. As they, Even the second one. Yeah, not, not a clear-cut leader right now as they come down the last curve here. Now it's like you're playing a video game with all three guys going at the same time. This is even. This is an even run here. Looks like Braylon O'Neill from Black River has a slight lead. Michael Baloney from Lowellville now has the lead. And it's O'Neill and Baloney back and forth. And Michael Baloney from Lowellville is going to win it, followed by Braylon O'Neill from Black River. Those two move on to the state final. Well, the senior from Lowellville had a, a good plan, took advantage of the last two hurdles to get his victory. Heat three on the track, Miles. Yeah, lane two, Dante Gentile from New Middleton Springfield, the junior with a 4 0 0.57. A lane three, Cohen Egon from Buckeye Trail, the senior with a 4-0-1-7. Lane four, Garrett Trentman from Ottoville, the junior with a 3-8-9-6. Cody Ricker in lane five from Lincoln View with the best time in this, or I'm sorry, second best time. The junior with a 3-9-6-5. The best time was Trentman from Ottoville with a 3-8-9-6. Lane six, Brody Baker from Cary, the junior with a 3-9-5-3. Lane seven, Wyatt Mowry from Mount Gilead from a senior with a 4 0 6 8. This will be the last heat in this. And we will go on to the girls' and boys' 200 meter dash, and that will be our final event of the day. We have a, a strong contingent from Ottaville right in front of our broadcast position. All on their feet, going to do everything they can to help Garrett Trentman do his best on this race. <laughs> Call two blocks. Losing my papers here, Miles, is going to pick up a little bit. Underway for this race. You're right, we got a lot of folks here rooting for their favorite athlete. A good 25 people in front of us from Ottoville wearing everything green and gold that they could find. <laughs> Garrett Trentman, the hometown hero, he'll be screaming his name. They're right, we're gonna have to stand up to see the end of this one. Oh, that is absolutely fine. Yeah, Love the right. enthusiasm. Absolutely. We'll be there with you. Trentman is in lane four for Ottawa. Best time. Trentman with 
a great start. Tremont is first over the first hurdle, Miles. He looks really strong as he goes first over the second hurdle. And he is stretching that lead out. Garrett Tremont from Ottawa making the hometown proud. Uh, Danny, his third hurdle was impressive. Boy, he, he a lot is, of ground. He is phenomenal right now. He has a huge lead heading into the home stretch. Garrett Tremont from Ottawa leading everybody as he tries to finish up this race and move on to the finals. Clinton on the last hurdle. Can he do it? Yes, he will move on to the finals and the Ottawa faithful show their appreciation. Hey, Garrett Trentman, tremendous start. Struggled a little bit at the end, but had enough left to hold everybody off. That is a great run by Garrett Trentman from Ottawa. When we come back, it's the last event of the day, the boys and girls 200 meter dash. You're watching High School Track and Field on WOS 10. It's time for speed again here at the State Girls and Boys Track and Field Championships as the girls 200 meter dash takes center stage. Everybody trying to get to tomorrow's fun. In lane two, Ama Karikari from uh, Summit Country Day. In lane three, Natalie Woodfin from Worthington Christian. Uh, lane four, Izzy Zahn from Coldwater. In lane five, Olivia Hudson from Oberlin. Azur Travis in lane six from Woodmore. And uh, Taraja Bird in lane seven, Purcell Marion. Uh, your best time, Izzy Zahn, the favorite from Coldwater, the junior, with a 2-4.42. This is going to be an outstanding race. Azir Travis from Woodmore, who we've seen several times today. And she is blazing out of the blocks. Yeah, take a look at Izzy Zahn, though. Absolutely flying. Come on. What a run. Some impressive stuff right that there. Really, really impressive. This is on from Coldwater. I've seen her run this year. That's she as good as I've seen her run. Runs run. right into the shadow and disappears from everybody else into the field. This is on the 24 flat. Taraja Burke from Purcell Mayor. Those two qualify for tomorrow's final. And you got to believe that it's your Travis uh, who finished that race in the fifth position. you got to believe it's just. Tired. Yeah, yes. has to be tired. She's been fantastic all day, but nobody was as impressive as Izzy Zahn on that run. Heat two of the girls' 200-meter dash, and we've got three local representatives. Lane two, Joyce Stallard from uh, Wellington. And lane three, Ellie Moeller from Liberty Center. Lane four, Delaney Jones from West of Liberty Salem. Uh, Alex Kesson in lane five from Delta St. John's. Maya Leach in lane six from Shenandoah. Edison Swergen from Fairlawn in lane seven. Your best time, Delaney Jones from West Liberty Salem, the junior with a 2 4 6 3. And they recognize the state pole vault champion over there. These girls are all being applauded by our crowd as we wait for the second heat of the girls to enter the And watch Delaney Jones in lane four and Alex Kesson in lane five from West Liberty Salem and Delta St. John, respectively. Uh, Kesson with a good time as well. It was a 2 4 9 4. And Moeller in lane three for Liberty Center, the senior with a 2 5 9 6. We just saw Izzy Zahn from Cold Run run a 24 flat. An outstanding time for that young lady. Boy, if she could go under 24 miles, wouldn't that be stupid? Danny, it was like she picked up speed the whole race, too. Yeah, she was impressive. She was so impressive. They are off. Lady Jones from West Liberty gets out of the box quick. Her and Alex Kesson stride for stride as they come around the curve. And it's Jones. It's Kesson 1 2 in the girls 2 and his dash. And Delaney Jones from West Liberty Sam starting to pull away. Kesson right on her heels. Delaney Jones from West Liberty. It's Alex Kesson, and they will finish 1 2, and they move on to tomorrow's. But Delaney Jones, so impressive how her feet barely touched the turf, right? Look how quick they are off the ground. She is an impressive runner. Kesson ran really well, but Jones, really impressive yeah, here. Jones ran at 24 7 miles and really wasn't pushed much. No. You know she can go better tomorrow. That will be a lot of fun to watch it. Izzy Zahn and Delaney Jones going at it. Heat three in the girls' 200 meter dash. And lane two, Ali Schindler from Ayersville, the senior at 2610. In lane three, Ava Vecchioni from New Middleton Springfield, the senior with a 2591. In lane four, Ayanya Charlton from Trinity, the junior with a 2541. 
Uh, lane five, Peyton Johnson from Peebles, the senior with a 2608. In lane six, Anna Rossner from Fort Recovery, the junior with a 2512. In lane seven, Elena Heller from Sandy Valley, the senior with a 2664. And Anna Charlton from Trinity, the junior, runs 25.14. You gotta believe. Uh, that uh, if she can get that under 24, what she's probably got maybe the fastest time in this. If you remember earlier today, we've seen her run a couple times. Tremendous finish. Yeah, she does. She has a great finish. She has already qualified a few times for several different other events. She tried to get qualified for the girls. Oh. Allie Schindler from Ayersville, the senior. What a tremendous basketball player she was uh, for the pilots. The lady pilots had a great season. Tremendous track athlete as well. Stick around after the girls and boys 200 meter dash as I was incorrect in calling it the last event of the day. The 4x400 meter relay will come up next. I had assumed those were finals tomorrow, but those will be semifinal events today, so stick around for those. That'll be our last event of the day. I was going to say, all the 4x4 guys looked up at you. We have the runoff also that uh, we have right. to take yeah. care of today, which means it's good news. More track. Yeah, absolutely. They are off and running. Girls, 200 meter dash. And Charlton from Trinity. Yeah, look at the finish here. Lead. And she is being pushed by Anna Resner from Fort Recovery. And those two are going to qualify easily for tomorrow's finals. You wonder if Resner kind of saw that, right? And just pulled up a little. Yeah, maybe you know. she, she knows she runs again tomorrow. Yeah, right about here. You're like, is she going to be able to overtake Charlton? But no need because you're going to be in the top two. When we come back, the boys take center stage in the 200 meter dash. You're watching High School Track and Field on WOSN. It broke down that fourth or fifth wall to tell people the truth about my Lord and Savior, how you know you should look at things or, or how you should care for people and not judge people. And it set me free. I wasn't that perfect vessel that I should be or should have been. Once I was baptized, I felt I was all anew. It really was a major pivot in my life. It was so fun to be a part of Terry's baptism and to see the ripple effect that, that has made all over the world. Welcome back to the Ohio High School State Track and Field Championships. I would like to thank all of our sponsors today, Ultimate Outdoor, Wattox Jewelry, Jones Excavating, OPAC, and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Thank you to all of our wonderful sponsors for making this broadcast happen. Miles, it's the boys 200 meter dash and we got some speedy ones today. Yeah, this heat especially, all 22s in this one. Lane two, Brayden Chenault from Paima Tuning Valley, the uh, junior with a 22.61. Lane three, Brody Zemba from Rosecrans, the sophomore, 2276. Evan Hudson in lane four from Overland, the senior, 22.04. Drew Modelski from Lowville in lane five, the sophomore with a 22.42. Lane six, Justin Knauf from Marion Local, the junior, the 22.54. Lane seven, Samuel Haley from Pettisville. He's had himself a good day already. The senior with a 22.64. So we saw Evan Hudson from Oberlin run already today in the 100 meter dash, and here he tries to compete in the 200 meter dash for a chance to go to the finals tomorrow. Mark Shine's favorite events, 200 meter dash. Yeah, Mark always talks about how he loves to watch them come around the turn to the finish. Absolutely. It was my daughter's favorite event. State runner up in the 200 meter dash. Oh, was she really? Yeah, fantastic. How, how close was that race? One tenth. Ooh. Keep an eye on lane six, Justin Nelson from Marion Local. Impressive 22.5. Going for the Flyers. Flyers got a chance to uh, win the whole thing, Miles. On team, team competition. They do. A lot of points yeah. in front of them. Yeah. Evan Hudson from Overland, as you mentioned. Uh, everybody's at a 22, but he has the best 22, 2204. Start. He's out of the box. Quick as they come around the curve, heading for the home stretch in the boys' 200 meter dash. And there you see Evan Hudson from Overland taking the lead as he's trying to hold off the field. Evan Hudson 
is going to win the boys 200 meter dash heat one to move on to the finals. Followed by Samuel Haley from Pettisville. Evan Hudson and Samuel Haley move on to the finals tomorrow. Well, one thing we've figured out after watching Evan Hudson today, tremendous finisher. He is fantastic. Heat two is up next. and. Griffin Stackhouse from Bluffton represents Northwest Ohio. He'll be in lane two, the junior from Bluffton with a 22-6-4. Owen, Owen Roth in lane three from Edgerton, a, a senior with a 22-6-1. And in lane four, Gabe Opong from Tree of Life Christian, the junior with a 22-3-2. Lane five, Isaac Cox from Rock Hill, the junior with a 22-4-0. Uh, lane six, Cooper Tigges from Margareta, uh, the senior with a 22-5-7. Lane seven, Danny Milburn from United, the junior, the 22-6-2. Danny, we have seen runners from United, and they've all been impressive today. Very impressive, as also we have saw Gabe Opong from Tree of Life Christian, one of the top finishers in the 100-meter dash. He qualified for that race for tomorrow's finals. We'll see if he can't get in the 200-meter finals. Now 22s, and Opong with the best one, 22-3-2. Isaac Cox from Rock Hill, close with a 22-4-0. Both juniors, so you'll see him back here again probably. Right. A little bit ahead of schedule here. Got times here. Called them to their lanes. Still a nice crowd on hand. Everybody waiting for the 4x400 meter semifinals. Still shining, great temperature out here. Another long pause before the start. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Heat two is underway here. Keep an eye on lane four, Gabe Opong from Tree of Life Christian. Let's go, Boomer! Let's go, Boomer! Oh, this is going to be anybody's race. This is a great race, and Opong is taking control of this one. And Gabe Opong from Tree of Life is going to run away with this one. Impressive run for that young man. A really good finish because on the straightaway, when they got to it, there was four guys that had a chance to win it. Opong says, no, uh-uh, it's mine. Opong goes one, Isaac Cox from Rock Hill goes two. Those two punch their tickets to tomorrow's finals. Third and final heat, boys 200 meter dash, and we've got a lot of local kids running in this one. As you like to say, a lot of local flavor a local in this flavor. one. And lane two, Trey Hensley from Allen East, the senior, 2270. Uh, lane three, Victor Holscher from Marion Local, the junior, the 2256. Lane four, Kamari Glenn, who we have seen quite a bit here today. Lima Perry, the junior with a 22-4-0. Lane five, Maddox Treese from Wayne Trace, the senior with a 22-5-1. And lane six, Matt Wisniewski from Independence, the senior, a 22-5-5. Lane seven, Hayden Baker from East Knox, the junior with a 22-8-7. Yeah, you look at these guys, Trey Hensley and Victor Holscher, both football standouts for their respective teams. Boy, those two were electric on the field when they'd catch the ball and they could score from anywhere. And Trey Hensley is an aggressive runner. If he is close at the end, you got to like his chances. But Kamari Glenn has been impressive. Really, anyone's race in this one. Yeah, here. Kamari Glenn qualified for four events today. We got to watch him in three of them. Uh, young man's going to have a good night's sleep tonight as he's going to be worn out. <laughs> Hensley, Treese, and Wisniewski are your seniors in this. The rest are juniors. So they are in the blocks. They have called them to their marks. He's been set for a while. Ready to go up. Set position. And away they go. It's 200 meter dash. 
Mari Glenn with a really nice start to Ryan Perry as he's in the middle of the track. Max Trees from Wayne Trace getting out and about. Followed by Hosher. Hensley behind him, and it's going to be Trees and Hosher going 1-2 in the last heat of the boys' tournament. You can tell Maddox Trees, look at the upper body on him. Young man that has spent a lot of time in the weight room, and it has paid off in a big way right here. When we come back, the final event of the night, the boys and girls 4x400 meter relay. Back here at Welcome Stadium to wrap up today's semifinal action of the boys and girls state track and field championships. And Miles, it's the girls 4x400 meter relay, the final event of the night. Everybody anticipates this event. It's always exciting because people rise to their feet. They're excited because it's the end, but yet they find the energy for this one. They sure do. You know, lane two, it's Kaleida. Lane three, Fairlawn. Lane four, Mogador, who they've had a really good day here today. Lane five, Smithville. Lane six, Colonel Crawford. And lane seven, the Columbus School for the Girls. State record in this one is Wayne Trace. Last year's Wayne Trace Raiders team finished with a 354. Uh, unbelievable, 354, unbelievable. Well, I, I remember at uh, Sydney Sin closed it out oh. and she was flying around the track. When did she end up going to college, Miles? I uh, can't remember where I heard she had went. But I'm sure she's had, <laughs> doing fantastic in whatever she's attempting to do. Kaleida scheduled the lead off was Ali Kuhlman, the junior. For Fairlawn, it was Addison Swergen, the senior. I'll take time to thank all of our sponsors, Ultimate Outdoor, bringing resort style living to your backyard every day. Also, Roddick's Jewelry is a presenting sponsor. Roddick's Jewelry at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert. We're online at Roddick's.com. Allen's premier sponsor is R.D. Jones Excavating. Call Artie Jones for your projects, your home, or business. Good luck to all the area athletes and go Mustangs. Premier local sponsor for Marion Local is OPEC. And Osgood, for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPEC. And our premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Douglas, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, hop and see. Smithville and Mogador had your best times coming into this. And they are the two out in front with Smithville leading the way. Kaleida. Hanging tight, Eddie Miller carrying the baton for them now, and for Fairlawn is Callie Hebler, the sophomore. Top two finishers from each heat, plus the next two fastest times, so you don't have to win it. You just gotta get the top two, and then maybe if you don't get the top two, you're hoping for that next fastest time. So that third place position is really, really important, Miles. Yeah, you wanna control your own destiny anytime you got a chance. Still and Mogador fighting it out there for this one. And Mogador going to be first on the exchange right there, but not too far behind Smithville. So they're clearly out in front. Mogador with the lead in front of Smithville. Mogador, fine track program. We see them here every year, boys and girls. Doing a great job. They're really good in about everything. They take athletics really serious. Third run for Collada is going to be Adeline Huber, the freshman. And for Fairlawn, it's going to be Cassie Heath, the sophomore. And this one has separated quite a bit. Mogador really pulling away from this one. And Mogador, Katie Lane, the, Katie Lane, the uh, senior. Kalata hanging out in fourth place. Mogador Miles got the baton. The last runner got the baton at the three minute mark. The state record is 354. So they're gonna push that one, but I don't believe they'll get it. We'll wait and see here. They are quite a ways ahead, so not really being pushed by many. Well, their time of 357 coming in today is impressive. Really impressive. Running directly into that wind that just picked up. Yeah, they're going to want to get around that curve. And look at the last runner for Smithville really cutting down the ground. And Smithville's going to be passed. Well, I thought they were going to be passed. Well, it's 
going to be a fun last oh, 50 yards. Oh, great finish for this one. See the time here. Mogador wins it. Followed by Smithville. Mogador and excuse me, Mogador, Smithville, and Colonel Crawford, one, two, and three. Mogador finishes with time at just over the four minute. It held true to form, right? Three best times. Yes, That's where they yep, finished one, two, and three. Ready to start the second heat. Rolls four by four hundred meter relay. Coldwater's foursome, Alig, Becca Wenning, Kirsten Keller, and Izzy Zahn. Watch Coldwater. It'll be interesting where they are at when Izzy Zahn gets the baton. Always fun to watch the best sprinters with a chance to bring it home for their team. And they are underway here in the second heat of the girls, four by 400 meter relay. There you see the team from Riverdale getting out. Kendall Rawl for Riverdale, getting things started, the senior. Now we'll have to not get confused by the orange jerseys because Coldwater and Minster both in the orange jerseys. So we'll try to keep those separated. As they come around the last curve, head to the home stretch, first runner. Each girl runs one lap around the track. Nice push. That's Kendall Rawl who had some extra oomph in her at the end. Hands it off to Eden Barnes. Like the approach, Danny, get your two seniors that started off for Yeah, yeah, been here, done that. Those two girls, I'm sure the nerves not as prevalent with them. They've been here a lot of times and not afraid to run their race. by four, the most anticipated event of most track meets. It always ends up deciding championships and people moving on to the next level. And there you see Coldwater in the second position. Trying to take over and they are gonna, let's see if Coldwater can get that first position and they do. That's Becca Wenning. That has now gotten the Coldwater ladies in front. Cavaliers are in first place right now. They try to hold on. They make their final appearance tomorrow in the finals. And Margareta was starting to make a move, but had a little bit of a, a lazy exchange there. Uh, back and forth position. Got another leader change there, and I'm trying to see who that is. I believe that's Minster that just took that over. It is Minster that took over the lead there. Let's see if we can't see that. And Margaret Hemelgarn from Minster. Coldwater's in second, Minster's in third, trying to find out who that is in the fourth position. I believe that's Fairbanks. Fairbanks is in the first position. Well, they were. They were, Fairbanks, the Panthers were in the first position, and Coldwater is gonna take the lead. That's Kirsten Keller that propels the Lady Cavaliers back to front. Coldwater and Minster. Coldwater, have they battled before in every sport, Miles? Coldwater and Minster. They know each other pretty well. Here we go. Coldwater and Minster battling it out to see who goes to the finals tomorrow. If they can hold serve at 1-2, they'll both go. And it looks like Minster's going to take the lead on the first curve. That's Cheney Cedarleaf, the senior, going against Izzy Zahn. That is Margareta right behind them, I believe. Yeah, Olivia Saylor for Margarita, the senior. For Margareta. She, she just took the lead. When Margareta picked the right closer and yes, Olivia Saylor. Did. My goodness, she is really bearing down now. Cold water on her heels. Now watch Izzy Zahn though, making a move. Picking up speed. Izzy Zahn, watch Look at this. Though. Watch Izzy Zahn from Cold Water. Just oh, going around. How just about this finish? You got to be kidding me. Izzy Zahn from Coldwater steals the show, and the Cavaliers move on to the finals. 
Well, if you're Coldwater and you're checking all the boxes and they say, need a big closer, we got one. Izzy Zahn checked that one off in a big way. That is Mariano Rivera. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the closer. Heat two. The Coldwater Cavaliers move on. Margareta moves on with them. They'll both be in the finals tomorrow. I would hate to be one of those athletes, though, that you have to sit and wait throughout the day. You know, you're yeah, just thinking about it, thinking about it. That was what I always said about my daughter. Both years she was at the state track meet, they were from 10 o'clock starts. So, you know, we got up in the morning, we had a routine, and yeah, we were going go. right to the track. These kids now at the Division three level are going to have to sit around all day. They're finally off. The guys that play in the NFL and in college football, they always say they like to play during the day because it, it's you're not sitting around waiting for kickoff. Athletes tomorrow are going to get a little bit of a taste like that. Think about how many times they run their track meets during the season, always during the day. Yeah, it's right after school, absolutely. So we are underway in the last heat here of the girls' 4 by 400 meter relay. Can't say enough about our camera guys. Megan Sherrick and Jacob O'Neill doing a great job. The shots that they have captured today and Ken Rieke, our producer, manning the RoboCam. They have done a great job. How about this shot? Getting it ready to accept the baton. See the nervous energy. Great work by our camera guys. <laughs> what a great job there. You see the Cincinnati Summit Country Day girls taking off there. Great shot of them. And Abby back doing a good job today getting interviews. Interviews All, and autographs. Yeah. She was signing autographs. Second runner for each team now taking off. Summit Country Day looking to take the lead here in this one as they get out front. Delaney Kinter in the second position there. See those long strides of that young lady from Country Day. Impressive running there by her. Miley Chateau from Fort Laramie doing a good job. Fort Laramie and Calvert battling it out there for two and three, respectively. Now, everybody does a really good job of navigating that wash on the exchange. And they sure do, Miles. Country Day still in the lead. Country Day came in with a time of 4.05. Not the best time in this heat, but they are running a really good race right now. Calvert right behind them. Second position, followed by Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie with some work to do. And Calvert making a move. You're right, Calvert is on the outside. They take the lead. Strong running by them as they go in the lead. Fort Laramie, one more runner to make up the, the third position. Uh, Emily Miller, the sophomore for Calvert, gets the lead position. Here they go. And the fell down, the third base runner fell down as she goes off the track. No interference there. Calvert continues to lead. Is it, is it Country Day? It is Country, no, it is Calvert, followed by Summit Country Day, 1-2. Great shot by our camera guy there. Cameron Shook carrying it for Calvert, the senior. Oh, Danny, she is not spending much time with her feet on the ground. No, she's not. She is moving along. And Calvert's going to win this one, followed by Summit Country Day. They'll go 1 2, and they'll move on to the finals. Fort Lauren is going to get a third position and a very important position as the fastest next two times qualified, and that may help them right there, Miles. They're a height camp dug deep. The junior for Fort Laramie able to get a third position. That'll do it for the girls when we come back. It's the boys, 4 by 400 meter relay. 
It's the final event of the night here at the Boys and Girls State Track and Field Championships. It's the boys 4x400 meter relay. I'd like to thank our title sponsor, Ultimate Outdoor, bringing resort style living to your backyard every day with luxury outdoor space. Our presenting sponsor is Laudix Jewelry. Laudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jewelry for 70 years. The premier sponsor for Allen East, R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. The premier sponsor for Marion Local is OPAC, for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. And finally, our premier sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Thank you to all our sponsors who did a great job of helping us bring this product to you. Miles, it's heat one of the boys, 4x400 four four meter relay. Yeah, Van Buren's going to be in lane two, Colonel Crawford in lane three, Lowellville in lane four, uh, North Middleton Springfield's going to be in lane five, Lincoln View in lane six, Badger in lane seven. Your best time belongs to Lowellville with a 321.59. Miles, I'm going to give you the record for this event by Gahanna Columbus Academy, and it's going to blow your mind away. Three minutes and 18 seconds. I saw that, that is earlier. just absolutely, that, 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 is, that is staggering. Four <laughs> athletes at 318. I, I don't know how it's humanly possible at this either. age. I don't either. That's, that's, that's crazy. For Van Buren, it's uh, Mikey Pendergast, the, the junior who is scheduled to lead things off, Lincoln View. Cody Ricker, the junior, scheduled to lead things off for them. Again, you look at uh, Mobile with a time of 321, not far off of the 318 time, but still, I don't believe any records are going to be set here today with the, with the cool temperatures, but uh, who knows? Great job by Lincoln View Cody Ricker to get them into the lead position on the first exchange. Uh, this is going to be tough because we've got three schools with black and white uniforms there. So uh, we'll have to get a uh, closer shot as they go in. And that is, looks like, Badger. Badger, Badger. Badger have not heard of that school, but they are. It's a great name for a school. Absolutely. Curtis Ware, the senior for Van Buren, carrying it, and Creston Tao, the junior for Lincoln. Here come the third legs of each team's 4x4 four four team. You can lose some steps there, right, trying to navigate yeah, you guys. Can. That's a great point, Miles, is there's a lot of congestion right there. And uh, we've seen teams get disqualified for getting in the way of other teams. Uh, moving them around and causing them to lose ground. It can kind of look like roller derby to a, a certain degree. You have to, have to navigate through that area. Let's see if we can identify the first place. Can I Lowellville, maybe? We'll have to wait and see. I believe it is Lowellville. Yeah, Lowellville, Lowellville had the best time, 3 2 1.59 coming in. And they do look strong here. Getting a sizable lead on this straightaway. Look at nobody else around them. Lowville with the time of 321, blazing time coming in. They get the time of 213 miles. Van Buren got a chance to grab the second spot right there. Landon Fisher got him a good spot. Curtis Ware handed it off to him in an efficient time. Van Buren got a chance to finish second in this. <laughs> Lowville really impressive as they come around the last curve here. Well, look at two, three, and four. It is a battle. Even four and five now making a move. They're going to have a giant pile behind Lowville. Yeah, Lowville's going to win this one easy. No state record today because they're not really being pushed. But they look impressive. Lincoln be on the outside. Lowville's going to win it. And let's see who comes in second, third, or fourth. Lowville wins it, followed by Newtown Springfield, and those two move on. Van Buren comes in at third, and Lincoln View at four. They'll have to wait to see their fate. Reed Harmon carried it the last part of the race for Van Buren, and Connor Baldoff for Lincoln View. At 323, uh, you got to believe they can go faster than that, Miles. Not pushed very well today by the rest of the field. Just about finishing up here at Welcome Stadium. Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday. 
bringing you WOSN's coverage of the Ohio High School State Track and Field event here in Dayton, Ohio. Danny, are, have you heard of the school Wellington before? Um, I've heard of Beef Wellington. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, what's their mascot? The Fighting Beefs? Yes, they have a beef with everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, uh, there's that's nothing a great like, name. When you have nothing to talk about, food humor is great. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it beats picking food. on me and my uh, band choices. Hey, Danny spent some time in uh, New Orleans that recently. Was, well, we, me and the locals call it the Big Easy. The Big Easy? Yeah. Oh, uh, favorite food that you, you had in uh, New Orleans? Boy, I'll tell All you All of what, it? Uh, yeah, there wasn't a bad meal I had, Miles. Um, gumbo, jambalaya, had some catfish, uh, had some beignets, uh, yeah, they, yeah, catfish etouffee, crawfish, or crawfish etouffee, it was, yeah, maybe one of the best food cities in the world. Uh, how many different ways can you prepare shrimp? <laughs> a lot, yeah. a lot. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to go. I've never been able to experience New Orleans. I, I hope I get to sometime. They're underway in heat two of the boys' four by 400 meter run. Top time in this event is Marion Lover with a 3.23.01. The Flyers hope to punch their ticket to tomorrow's finals. Well, it should be a real interesting battle between them and Antwerp. Antwerp with a 3.24.29. Those top two teams not separated by much. Great job of navigating this for the last turn here as they head towards the home stretch. Tuscarora's Valley in the lead. Boy, that young man looks impressive, Miles. That's Pete Conrad, the, the freshman. Boy, he looks impressive. He ran strong the entire lap. Marion Loco in the second position as they look strong. They're trying to punch their ticket to tomorrow's finals. Grice Hop handing it to Holsher for Marion Local. Don't look now, but Antwerp closing just a little bit in that third position. And now they're going to get past, it looks like. Tuscarora's Valley still in the lead. Marion Local closing quick, and Marion Local goes around us, and the Flyers have taken the lead. Is that Victor Holscher in the second it position? It is Holscher. And Dane Scholl closed for Antwerp right there. The Flyers continue to look great. I said earlier, they've got a chance to win a team title as they've got athletes all up and down the roster in this state semifinal moving on to the finals tomorrow. Well, if you're a Marion local and you're not involved in a sport, do people look at you like, what are you doing? Well, you, if you're not involved in a sport and you're a boy, you probably don't go to school there, right? I mean, <laughs> everybody plays sports there. You have to. And it is interesting how you see the same names. Yes. Right. Yeah. Everybody, even if they leave Marion local, they go back. Boy, Marion local really getting a lead. Look at Antwerp trying to get that second position, Miles. That's Andrew Coleman for Marion Local extending that lead. Marion Local with a huge lead. Tuscaroras Valley in the second position, followed closely by Columbiana. Did not think that Marion Local was going to pull away like this. Boy, this is impressive, Miles. This is really impressive. Wesley showing, carrying it for them right now. Look at the termination on the face of Wesley. He is bringing it home for the Flyers as he has a really big lead here. He just has to hold on. Move local into the finals. Danny, look at the kick by Antwerp right here, though. Antwerp on the outside, trying to close the gap. Get in that second position. It's going to be a battle for second, Miles, and it's going to be close. <laughs> and it looks like the second place finish was. Was that Wellington? It was Wellington. The Wellington team gets the second position and they move on to the finals. And we had several of the Wellington faithful down here to our right really cheering hard. Remember, so it's backed out because we backed out of the 80 game. Mm -hmm. oh. So Los Angeles Games, Carl Lewis, Mary Lou Retton. 
green team. Was that the green team or was that? No, he, no that was, we were yeah, a really yeah, good basketball yeah, team right, in 84, yeah. yeah. Bobby Knight coaching Michael yeah. Jordan was on that team. 92 was it? It was. Again, Michael Jordan was on that one. Not coached by Bobby Knight. Keep an eye on lane four, Wayne Trace, lane six to Nora, and lane seven, New Bremen. Now Eli Trace was scheduled to uh, carry the baton first for Wayne Trace. North Adams with the lead here starting out this race. The kids from Adams County. Late push by Tenor to grab that third position. Wayne Trace with the first handoff. Nice job there by the Raiders as they are right behind North Adams. Watch New Bremen on the outside as they're coming up quick. It's Jet Jellison that was scheduled to carry it second for New Bremen. Paul Westrick for Tenora, the second baton carrier. Hudson Myers, a really good basketball player for Wayne Trace, carrying it second. Here they come. In the last quarter of the home stretch, getting to the third position. Now Tenora moves up into the second position. Look at the strides from the young man from Tenora. The Rams come out of nowhere and they get the lead. Miles and it's Tenora and Wayne Trace neck and neck. Yeah, how about some GMC love right that's there? That's right, that's right. Those two teams have battled over the years in every sport. Jacob Bishop for Tenora, the junior. He is battling with Cole Moorhead. Wayne Trace takes the lead on the outside down the back stretch. As they try to get to the anchor runner, this is going to be a great race. Wayne Trace putting a little distance between them and Tenora. That'll be Maddox Trace that's going to close it out for Wayne Trace. Mooney in the third position with a chance to go past Tenora. But Tenora holding on. Well, maybe not. Here comes Mooney. Mooney going to take the second position. Wayne Trace gets it to Trace. And tying flowers for Mooney. Great job. Oh, oh it's Tenora. Tenora drops the baton. Tenora dropped the baton. They're in the third position. Don't believe it interfered with anybody because they stayed in their lane, Miles. It just hopped right back up. We talked about it earlier, Danny. The exchange so important. It happens all the time. It Ryan Steingast carrying it for Tenora. We'll take a look at that after the race here. We we'll get a great shot of that. Looks like Wayne Trace easily going to move on to the finals tomorrow. Mooney's in second, but on the outside. Look at Maddox Trace, though. All power as he finishes us. Oh, you're right. And Mooney's going to come in second. Wayne Trace goes one, Mooney second, as those two, those two teams punch their tickets to tomorrow's finals. Interesting race, Miles, and we watch here the handoff exchange for Tenora. And he drops the baton, but it stayed in their lane, no interference. Uh, boy, they got lucky then, really lucky. We have a runoff that we have to take care of. But Danny, to go back to that exchange, it was just a quick turn of the head, right? Didn't it was, much it always was. in the eyes. And then because the uncertainty it didn't let go of the baton because the eye contact wasn't where it needed to be. So we're going to have a couple of runoffs here. And I believe just the boys 100 or what, boys 100 and girls. So when we come back, we're going to watch those two races as the really important miles as it gives one of these athletes a chance to move to the state finals. Now, talk about controlling your own destiny. You got a shot right here. We'll be back right after these messages. We're back here at Welcome Stadium, and we've got some bonus coverage as we've got a runoff here, Miles, for the girls' 100-meter dash. This is for the eighth position. One of these girls is going to the finals tomorrow. Oh, talk about the pressure <laughs> is on, right? This is great. And the entire stadium, Miles, is watching this race. Everybody is on their feet watching. What, what a climactic end to a great day of track and field. Imagine the concentration, the stress, and the anxiety at this moment. There is nobody sitting down. Underway, and they are both, they 
are running neck and neck, and no wonder this is a runoff. These girls are running for their future here, and what a great finish, and we will get you the winner here. Uh, looks like Addison Swearingen from Fairlawn wins his wins that with a 12-4-2. Addison Swearingen moves on from that. It's a shame that anyone had to lose that, right? Right, but exactly. you have the opportunity, might as well seize it. What a great day of track and field, Miles. Sum it up, what we saw today. <laughs> Just fantastic. We said at the beginning, it's the best kept secret in Ohio, isn't it? You see it the is. greatest athletes in the state of Ohio come out here and compete. And it was so much fun. It was a great afternoon. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be wrapping it up with the state finals. You don't want to miss that. It is the best in the state of Ohio in track and field. You and Jennifer uh, will be handling that. I'll be on the infield taking care of some interviews. It's going to be a fantastic day. For Megan Sherry, Jacob O'Neill, our director, Ken Richard, for Miles Holiday, I'm Danny Holbrook saying we'll see you tomorrow for the state finals of track and field on WOSN.